It's time for Northern Illinois Huskies Hockey on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. The Huskies are on the prowl from suburban Geneva, Illinois. It's NIU Huskies Hockey on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Swartz, and I'm joined, as always, by my, bro by my broadcast by my broadcast partner, Marcus Grosnick. Um, we are officially on the air now. Yep. Some of our listeners may have heard us a little bit earlier as we were checking the sound. So um, it's good to have you all along. Thanks for dialing us up and spending some of your Friday night. Marcus, the NIU comes in tonight, and uh, <clears throat> they are on the season 14-7 and seven mm -hmm. on yep. the year, and uh, they come off of a split with Ohio State. Now, you were down at the game. I could not make the, the trip, but you were at the game at Ohio State. Um, and so this was the first first time that they had really uh, they had played in a, almost a month. Uh, what did you notice about them? Was it the same team that we saw before break, or were there any differences? I think it was the same team. They uh, added uh, Nick Leon and Anthony Cantillo, the two new transfers from Robert Morris and uh, University of Rhode Island. Both played really well. Nick Leon got his first goal as a Husky on the line with Cantillo and Serpico. Again, they are coming off a month break, still a little, little slow getting their legs underneath them, but... As the weekend went on, they got better. Johnny Prillo got a chance to play a few periods, and the Saturday game looked really good, even though they got the loss. But, again, everything is, is on the up and up, as we like to say. Absolutely it is, and the Huskies come in tonight. You mentioned their two new players, Anthony Contillo and Nick Leon, um, both of them former D1, ACHA D1 players, uh, Contillo at the University of Rhode Island, and Leon with the Robert Morris University gold team, one of about a dozen teams yeah. they have at Robert Morris University. But they both are going to add different aspects. And um, with Contillo, it's speed. And I think with Leon, it's going to be um, scoring a little bit. He seems like a little bit of a score. D is that what you saw from those two guys last weekend? Yeah, Contillo, if you, and when you hear the interview with uh, coaches Ronaldo and Goldsmith, Contillo's got one of the best hockey minds on the team. Yeah. Uh, and Nick Leon, one of the best hands. He, okay. had, he controlled the puck against OSU by himself for a good 30 seconds before he had a backhanded goal. So look for him to have good hands, good puck control, and with uh, Serpico centering that line. That's, that's going to be a deadly line as the season goes on. And one of the things that happened to the Huskies over the break was that not only did they lose Waterman, who graduated, but they lost two other players, both of them on the blue line, both yep. defensemen. And so they brought up two uh, members from the D3 team, Nick Frodima and Matt Swastik. Two new guys. They're in uniform tonight. They'll be playing this weekend. We don't know how much they'll be playing with the team. Tell us a little bit about what you saw from them last weekend. Well, Nick Frodima, he played Friday night. Uh, a scrappy guy. He played okay. with uh, Troy Hickey on the defense a lot. So those two played really well. Nick Swastik, uh, or Matt Swastik, played Saturday night. Speedster, small little guy that can get into those areas and give them a chance to gel with their defense mates, and, and this defense is going to get the depth back that they lost. Abs well, and that's the hope because you, you're going to look for people to step up. One of the other things they did we, when we talked to Coach uh, Ronaldo on the podcast this week was that he mentioned the fact that they moved Greg Jacobson from yep. the forward back to the blue line for a defenseman, and they really feel like he's at home there. And the defense is going to be put to the test against this Missouri State Ice Bear team. Missouri State comes in 17-3-2 and two on the year. And some of the guys that they have playing can absolutely fill it up. They are prolific scorers, and I'm talking about Andy Draper with 20 goals. Um, I'm sorry, 16 goals and 10 assists in 20 games. You've got um, Jack Ryan with 20, 28 goals, 16 assists. His brother Blake Ryan, 16 goals, 20 assists. So the defense is going to have to be really on its toes. Alex Hare is going to have to play a good game in net. But as we've said about him lots, he usually stops the first one. It's the rebounds that either he can't control or that his defensemen don't clear. And I would guess tonight that if we see Missouri State with sustained pressure in the NIU zone, they're going to come away with goals. Yeah, and again, like you're going to hear in the interview, Chuck Ronaldo said they're going to get shots and they're going to get goals. But you have to learn to contain it and not let them get into those big double-digit goal scores that they have done already this year against Iowa, uh, Linden, 
Lindenwood, Kansas, and Eastern Illinois. Yeah, and it, you look at some of those scores, and they'll make you sick if you're if you're a, a fan yeah. of, of any team that's not Missouri State because they just they just ran it up, and this is a team that is not going to stop. So NIU, like they had to with SIUE when they swept them, they're going to have to make Missouri State play their game. It's going to be a challenge. Missouri State, very talented, very deep. But um, you'll know, I think, by the end of the first period yeah. how this game's going to go. If Missouri State has four goals in the first period, it's not going to be uh, its going to be a long night for NIU. Yeah, if you can contain them to one, two goals in that first period, then you've, you've done a good job and you're, you've kept yourself into the game. I mean, the first line of Greenberg, Bach and Renly continued their great play. Look for big things from Serpico, Leon, and Cantillo as well. So, And I think it would be huge if NIU got those new guys to contribute right away. You yeah. know, there's no tape on them. Uh, Missouri State can't watch them. We provided Missouri State and other teams with a great <laughs> service yeah. by broadcasting our games so they can watch it. Um, and, and their broadcaster, Steve Casson, who we'll actually hear from in the second uh, intermission tonight, um, <clears throat> mentioned when he talked to me that, you know, uh, that's something that's that's been new and that they've appreciated about NIU is that they got to kind of scout them on video, mm -hmm. but there isn't that tape on Leon and yeah. Contillo, and so hopefully those guys, you know, you might be able to sneak in on them. They don't know how to. They don't. They haven't seen Contillo's yeah. speed. They haven't seen Leon's hands yet, um, and that'll be important, I think, for them to 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 come off and, and score well. One of the things that we always do on these broadcasts is that Marcus always gives us his three keys to victory for the Husky tonight. Um, he's got three keys. Marcus, why don't you take us through those three keys? All right, tonight's keys against Missouri State University. Number one, get traffic and get deflections on the net. Starting goaltender tonight is Justin Davis. He's 8-3 and three with a 1.92 goals against average. So he's kind of like Hare was in the beginning of the season, seeing the puck really well, controlling the rebounds and deflections. So if you can get a guy like Hanson or even Cantillo or Leon in front of that net, and, and create traffic, you're going to do yourself really well. Yeah, I, w I would guess that we'll see, uh, especially when he's on the ice, Hanson with his size yeah. trying to get in there. But, but I, you know, I, I don't know if they'll change it up, but it wouldn't surprise me to see maybe uh, maybe a, uh, oh, I don't know, a, a, a picket in yeah. front of the net. Somebody with a little more size as well. That'll be interesting to see if they can make that happen. But um, so, obviously, traffic in front of the net, shots on net. On Davis tonight, how about your second key? And as we already talked about, key number two, control the MSU high-octane offense. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to some of these scores. They beat Kansas 18 to nothing. <laughs> they beat Lindenwood 11 to one. They beat Iowa 13-1 and 16 to two. So hold on, let me let me do that math. Yeah. That's 29 to three. Yeah. Yikes. So what you need to do, you need to clear pucks out of the zone right away. If you get an opportunity, even if you ice it, it looks like they're coming on. Just throw it down to the other end. Don't allow second chance opportunities. Mm. Now that's going to come uh, with uh, Alex Herring goal not allowing big rebounds. And that's also going to land on the defenseman to clear those pucks. Okay, so that's I, th I think that's absolutely a, a big thing for this game is their ability to control that offense mm -hmm. that Missouri State throws at them. And, and um, well, let's get to your third key, but I have a, a, an extra point on that. But go ahead, talk about your third key. All right, key number three is going to be that line of Leon Cantillo and Serpico. Uh, last weekend, uh, Leon again got his first goal as a Husky. They played really well together with Pico uh, centering up that line. They played smooth. They looked for each other, uh, looked for a second chance opportunity. So I think if they can play well, it's with uh, no one knowing what Cantillo and Leon have done. Yeah. It's sneaky. Absolutely. And we mentioned this uh, a few times now uh, when we talked about the rankings and, and, and uh, the standings and things like that. But in the ACHA, Missouri State is number six. Yep. NIU, seven. This is the team you are directly chasing. And if, if NIU wants to be in that conversation, then this is a team you've got to show against. You've got to you've got to play well against tonight. And um, I really look for NIU to do that. I don't think they're intimidated. I think they view it as a challenge. I think they're still playing with the, with the attitude of, you know what? We don't know that people quite take us seriously yet. And this is another opportunity, just like that SIUE game was, yep. to show everybody what you are, what you're capable of. Yeah, I mean. Sweeping SIUE was a big feather in the cap. It got them from 10 to 7. If they can take three out of four or even sweep uh, MSU tonight and this weekend, that, that should move them up into the top five at least in the standings. And talking to the guys and, and, and seeing them this week, they're confident. Oh, they yeah. are confident that, that they are right with this team. Time will tell. We've got 60 minutes of hockey <laughs> to find out. So um, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of the evening. And when we come back, we'll hear, as Marcus mentioned, we talked to NIU head coach Chuck Ronaldo and assistant coach David Goldsmith. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to the NIU Huskies Hockey pregame show on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network.
Looking for a place to watch the big game? Look no further than Chelios' Pub & Grill. Located conveniently in the Fox Valley Ice Arena, Chelios' Pub & Grill has everything you need for a great eating and drinking experience. Chelios' has an extensive menu featuring favorites like burgers, wings, and beer, as well as original items to keep you coming back over and over. Make sure to bring in your NIU hockey game ticket for 10% off your order. And NIU students, just show your student ID for specials and discounts. Whether you want to watch football, basketball, baseball, or hockey, or you just want to grab a drink after work, Chelios' Pub & Grill is the best place to be. Located inside the Fox Valley Ice Arena at 1996 Kirk Road in Geneva, Chelios' Pub & Grill is the place where true sports fans meet. Are you an NIU hockey fan? That's a clown question, bro. If so, you should be listening to the NIU Hockey Podcast. Hosted by the voice of Huskies Hockey, Scott Swartz, the NIU Hockey Podcast gives you the latest news about your NIU D2 Huskies. Featuring interviews with head coach Chuck Ronaldo. I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. Assistant coach David Goldsmith. He's a nice boy. As well as Huskies players. The NIU Hockey Podcast is your source for NIU D2 hockey information. Just log on to Facebook.com slash NIU Hockey Podcast for updates on when new podcasts are posted. So if you want the inside knowledge on NIU D2 hockey. I am the smart. I am the smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-T. The NIU Hockey Podcast is just for you. Remember, go to Facebook.com slash NIU Hockey Podcast for more information. to the NIU Huskies Radio Network. And now, the voices of NIU Huskies Hockey, Marcus Grosnick and Scott Swartz. That is indeed who we are. I'm Scott Swartz, he's Marcus Grosnick, and we are ringside at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. And as you can see on our Ustream channel feed, they are clearing the ice in preparation for the game tonight. We've got about eight and a half minutes before lineups and the anthem and the puck drop. So while we are doing that, we're going to talk with, uh, we're going to play you our interview that we had with NIU head coach Chuck Ronaldo and assistant coach David Goldsmith. But before that, Marcus, we have to talk with the crowd here at, at uh, yeah. Fox Valley tonight. Great crowd coming in tonight. Um, it's really great to see all these NIU fans. And Marcus, something I know that you're happy about, I'm happy about, a lot of people with Blackhawks gear oh. on, we're all happy that the NHL lockout is over and that we're going to get to see our Hawks play again. I was starting to worry about my hockey show. What was I going to do if there's going to be no <laughs> hockey? <laughs> Yeah, you're going to keep having to have guys like me on it. Oh, That's how I desperate you were. Hey, it was good, though, when you were on it. Well, I, 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 yeah, you'll say that now. I don't know <laughs> what, what you're saying when I'm not around, but that's but, all right. So, <laughs> no, I, you know, yeah. I, I'm happy, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to hopefully get the, uh, the league to uh, – uh, uh, the player, excuse me, to ratify it tomorrow, and training camps open Sunday. Sunday, yep. And then games about a week later. The 19th. Yeah. And so, we already um, know who our opponent yeah, is. Yeah, the Hawks get to go play the – the watch the watch the Kings raise the raise the uh, banner and get their rings. So, well, that should hopefully you know be some motivation for yeah. them. So, again, we are waiting for the um, ice to get cleaned, and as soon as it is, we'll have the players back out. We'll have the lineups and the anthem, and then the puck drop. So, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and play you our interview that we had earlier with NIU coach Chuck Ronaldo and assistant coach David Goldsmith. We talked to them about this matchup between the Huskies and the Ice Bears. So without any further ado, here's NIU coaches Ronaldo and Goldsmith. Here at the Fox Valley Ice Arena, and we are talking with the broadcaster for the Missouri State Ice Bears, Steve Cass. And Steve, thanks so much for your time. You guys come in to act. 
here at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. And we're talking with our pregame chat with head coach Chuck Ronaldo and assistant coach David Goldsmith. Guys, you come in tonight, you're facing the Missouri State Ice Bears, the team right ahead of you in the ACHA. Um, I would guess that like a lot of games and a lot of, a lot of things we've had already this season, that uh, the first period and, and the start of the game is going to be pretty important to dictate how this game is going to go tonight. Uh, very important. You know, it's it's a team that uh, it's they're run and gun, so they're going to try to establish their game when they're on the road as quick as possible, and it's very important. No matter what, uh, you know, the Huskies always want to establish Husky hockey right yeah. away, but especially against a team like this because you give a team like this momentum, and it's really, really hard to get, get back. Yeah. Uh, Coach Goldsmith, uh, you can maybe talk a little bit about this, having played more recently than Coach Ronaldo. Um, haven't, no offense, Coach. I don't mean to, to call you old there. Sorry about that. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Coach Goldsmith, these are guys haven't played in probably about a month. They had a long bus ride coming here today. Is this a pretty good time to be catching a team like this? Yeah, I mean, they've been... They haven't played uh, in that long, as you said, and you know, so that means they're thinking about us. You know, they uh, they're probably sitting there thinking that this is a team that you know has had a good first half of the year, and that they got to come out and prove that they're the better team. And you know, uh, that's you know, that's a great chance to pounce on them. You know, they're going to be uptight. They haven't played in a while. I'm sure they've been practicing. A lot of these guys live in St. Louis, so I'm sure they've been on the ice together. There's mm -hmm. ton, I mean, there's ton of ice down there, and I know they have been practicing. Saw so they practiced at uh, you know the Scott Trade Center where the Blues play lately. So. Um, you know, it's not really much of a difference. You know, once that puck drops, it's just back to playing hockey. So, you know, we just got to make sure that we come out, uh, you know, all 60 minutes and, and give it our all and play Husky hockey. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're not really worried about what they do. Yeah. Um, one of the things that they do is score. And uh, they've got some guys on that team that can fill it up. You mentioned them in the podcast this week, Draper, the Ryan brothers. Um, what, do you, what do you guys have to do to try to contain them? Uh, you know, once again, play our game. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't we can't take too many chances. We need to stick to our systems. We need to always know where those guys are. You know, we we've been successful with our, our D and our centers working hard down low and, and getting in the lanes, getting in the shooting lanes. Uh, if we're not moving our feet, we're not getting to those shooting lanes. It's going to be a long night. But you know, any, any player in order to score, they got to get to the net. And if yeah. we can keep them away from the net, everything will be okay. So it's going to be pretty important for you guys to keep them from putting the shots on net that they're usually able to do. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're going to get their shots, and, and goals are going to go in. Things are going to happen. It's a matter of containing it, making sure that when or if one does go in, that we then counter and put one in ourselves and keep it close. Uh, the closer the game is, the lower scoring the game, the game is, the better opportunity we're going to have. It's a Friday night game here, so hopefully you'll get a nice crowd. What effect does it have when you have a loud home crowd here? You know, you haven't been here for, for a while. The last time you were here was the SIUE game. I think it was the 4th of December, something like that. That's got to be a, a huge effect for you to be able to, to have a big crowd here to cheer you on. I mean, you, you can't, you know, beat a home crowd. Uh, that's one of the things that Missouri State does well is they mm. pack their house, and there's a reason why they're so successful at home, and there's a reason why we're succe so successful at home yeah. is we have a great, we have a great home crowd, we have a great following, and it's only getting better. I mean, we're selling more pre-sale tickets, so you know, all the fans out there that are seeing and hearing about these games, you know, we, we really appreciate you guys coming out and uh, continue to fill up these stands. I know it's, uh, it makes it fun for us to play. I know it makes it fun for the boys. It makes it fun for us to coach, and you can tell everyone has fun in the stands. So, you know, there's really nothing better than having a lot of you know there's nothing more fun than having a team uh, or crowd playing behind you and there's nothing harder to play against than a uh, team that's motivated by that absolutely last thing for you here guys um this is only your second weekend of games i would assume people are pretty healthy is there anybody fighting anything nagging anything like that how's the health of your squad uh we're pretty healthy uh schwartz unfortunately can't go today he's uh got a nagging injury similar to what serpico had before the break mm -hmm. a uh, thigh injury so he couldn't go very well in practice on Wednesday, so we're going to hold him out. Uh, we don't want to risk further injury with that. Um, so we're hoping maybe he can go tomorrow, but that's really our only health issue besides guys still nursing the old bumps and bruises, which they're always going to have. Um, I, I lied. I have one other thing I meant to ask you. Can you talk a little bit about your, your new players, Nick Leon and uh, Anthony Contillo, and how they've kind of worked in? You've seen them practice a few, a few times now. How are they doing working in um, with the rest of the team? Great. You know, I mean, it's it's been a seamless transition for them. Um, Leon's been a little bit easier because we've had him with the team practicing and sure. involved with them for a semester, uh, you know, on a very limited basis. But, um, but you know, Contillo, you know, we've mentioned before, his hockey IQ is, is through the roof. He knows the game well. He's comfortable with these guys already. And, uh, you know, they're they're motivated. They You know, they're they're bleeding black and red already. So, I mean, it doesn't take long for, for these guys to blend right in and, and be a part of it. Excellent. Well, guys, thanks so much for your time. Let's go get a win tonight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Right. Well,
That's our interview earlier we conducted with NIU coaches Ronaldo and Goldsmith. And Marcus, you, you have to like what they said, but they know what's in front of them yeah. here. They know that um, they cannot get sucked into the style of play of Missouri State because if they do, they're, they don't have a chance. They've yeah. got to make them play their style. You have to play Huskies hockey, and you have to keep it close in the first 20 minutes. I think if you can do that along with my three keys, there should be no problem why NIU can't beat MSU tonight. Both teams are out of the locker room, and they are ready for starting lineups here as we are at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. So we'll leave the uh, we'll leave the camera on, but we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll have the lineups for you. We'll probably have the anthem, and then we'll have the puck drop. So don't go anywhere. It is uh, time for Huskies Hockey. Again, you are listening to Huskies Hockey on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. Are you looking for a place to get all your AHL news? Then tune in Wednesdays from 4 to 6 and listen to the Chicago Hockey Connection on SportstownChicago.com. We will talk about the Chicago Wolves and the Rockford Icehawks, analyze every goal, save, and win for both teams, including exclusive interviews of coaches and players and much, much more. Again, CHC airs Wednesdays from 4 to 6 on SportstownChicago.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Chicago Hockey Connection to get all your hockey updates. Remember when your neighbor found us naked in the car And the time some outdoor action got us kicked out of the park Getting frisky in the dark, I gave your eye a poke I think the dog is also in the bed Do I smell smoke, you and me? We never give up, you and me We never give up, you and me We never give up, you and me We never ever give up This is your time. Now go out there and take it. We always know when it's our time on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. We are back at the Fox Valley Ice Arena here in Geneva, Illinois. The lineups are being given as we speak. And the Huskies are coming out to the ice. And we will have our national anthem as soon as that the last one is announced. And now we are going to have our anthem. So we'll be back and talk to you about the lineups here in just a minute. But now our national anthem from the Fox Valley Ice Arena. National Anthem here at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. You can hear the crowd. They're going crazy. We've got a, a group of kids just to our right, and they are as excited about a hockey game as I've <laughs> ever seen any kids. So without any further ado, before the puck drop, let's get to the starting lineups for the visiting Ice Bears from Missouri State. Carson McInnes and Jacob Guthrie is the defensive pairing. The forwards are Andy Draper, Adam Otten, and Miguel Franco, and they're playing in front of Justin Davis. Davis must have won the coin flip. Marcus, I don't know if you heard, but their goalies are so good that many times their coach doesn't decide who plays. They simply flip a coin, and whoever plays Friday night, the other one plays Saturday. Wow. Yeah, never, that, never heard that before. I never had either, but how confident do you have to be in those guys? NIU has their top line out there, the defensive pairing of Troy Hickey and Brian Pickett, and the forwards for the Huskies, Mark Greenberg, Nick Rimley, and Rob Bach in front of their goalie, Alex Hare. 
So at the faceoff circle, Otten and Remley, one by Remley to Pickett. Pickett fires it down into the Ice Bear zone, and they quick, quickly flip it to center ice. Pickett has it, goes back to Troy Hickey. Hickey all the way up to Remley, who tries to tap it now into the attacking zone, and the Ice Bears flip it back out. Guthrie flips it back out down into the behind the Husky net. It's Troy Hickey. Again, early on, it's going to be important to see. Here's a centering pass shot into the glove of Alex Hare. He covers it up. Whistle stops play, 19.35. There you go, first opportunity for a shot. Missouri State takes it. Yeah, turnover in behind Alex Hare. Puck comes right back to the point. Ice Bears get a shot, and a good job by Hare to not allow any rebounds, sucking that puck up in the chest. NIU is not going to be able to turn the puck no. over in their own zone like that. If they do that again, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, and one thing they also have to do is don't allow them easy access into the zone. If they can step them up at the blue line, they'll be fine. Boris and Kirksey on the faceoff. Boris, as he's done a lot lately, wins the, force, or the faceoff. Billy Line with it is is it now is chipped back by Buckheit for the Ice Bears, and it's still in the Husky zone. A shot there from the high slot by Barch, kicked wide, never did get through. I think Ms. McSweeney got a skate on that. Now Hanson on the breakout tried to find his man Boris. It's going down all the way, and that'll be an icing call. We'll come back all the way. It'll be a defensive zone draw for the Huskies. 19-11 to go. First period, no score. And that's that's a that's a good play there. I think if if you see them coming hard like they have, the Ice Bears are ready. Only about 50 seconds into the first period. Just ice it. Ice it, set yourself back up, and set yourself up for a breakout. And get a little break. Yeah. I think that's going to be an important thing for them, too, is to just get a break. Boris wins the faceoff again as there's new Husky, number 92, Leon, out there. Number 92 on there playing with this second line here. So that's something a little different this week than last week is Leon getting a chance on the second line. He did play for D1 Robert Morris University, their gold team. So he's no stranger to top flight competition. That's what the Huskies have here against Missouri State. He carries it deep into the zone, but then turns it over to Buckite. Buckite now comes up. Here comes the Ice Bears on a breakout. Barrett tried to hold it, but the pass went just past him for McSweeney to pick it up for NIU. NIU moving left to right. They're in their home whites. The black pants, lets a red trim on the Husky uniform. Missouri State in, I guess, what I would call kind of a maroon. Is the number 17 there. Jack Ryan tries to kick at that puck. And here's Leon to Wheeler. Wheeler down. He's got some space. Can't get a shot through as a good stick by Ryan Armstrong of the Ice Bears. Breaks up that offensive chance. Now in their own zone. Here are the Ice Bears. Jack Ryan. One of their top scorers flips it to neutral ice. Brian Pickett picks it up. Comes across in front of us. Here's Anthony Contillo. His first home game as a Husky. We're looking for his speed. Puck was loose in front. Contillo couldn't get to it. It was knocked away by Armstrong. And now here come the Ice Bears out. Up the ice is Jack Ryan. Ryan tried to find his teammate there, Barrett. Couldn't, and it's all the way down to Hare. Hare now tried to hit Contillo, but Contillo had sagged a little deep into the zone and unfortunately couldn't find that. There's number 71, Justin Rosinski. He's a new Husky. Now, if you've been with the Huskies before, you, you recognize him. Contillo fighting for the puck back there and ends up losing it, unfortunately, there to McInnes. But uh, Rosinski was the top scorer for the Huskies last year, and he has come back and is playing with them now as a little shot goes wide by Justin Kim. This one's loose in front, kicked wide now. Here's Serpico up to Contillo. Contillo tries to break it out to Cornier, and he missed his pass, and that'll be with Jacob Guthrie for the Ice Bears, who fires it into the far side corner. Huskies again going left to right, Missouri State going right to left. Brandon Meyer in the corner battling. He loses it there to Lukeman, who gets it down behind the net to Kim. Battle now in the corner, back to Kim. Pickett battling there. Two number 24s, Kim and Pickett battle for it. And now it's taken out there by Hickey. Hickey taken out. We're going to have a delayed penalty against the Ice Bears, and it's going to be on number 24, Justin Kim. I would assume a trip, yep. maybe a checking from behind. It's a tripping call. So first period at 16.56, Huskies get their first power play opportunity. And it's actually going to be a hook. It's a hooking penalty. Here I wrote trip down, Marcus. You gotta, you gotta help me out, oh. man. Come on. Hey, you could have called that on any three <laughs> yeah, of those penalties. Yeah, that's about right. You're tr that's true. All right, now one of the things we gotta watch out for is I talked to their broadcaster, Steve Cass, and he told me they have 20 shorthanded goals. Wow. Yeah. So they are not just gonna look to clear the puck out. They're looking to score. As the faceoff is still battled for in the corner there, Boris, Hansen, and Greenberg out there. As our line and McSweeney, the top power play line for the Huskies. Greenberg on the far side into the. Back behind the net for Hanson. Hanson centering pass in front. Couldn't find Boris as a, as a uh, Missouri State player got in the way. I believe that was Aldag. Hair out of his net to play it. Leaves it for Billy Line. Line behind the net. Comes around. Comes up front. Four checks going to be there. And down goes number 12, Mark Kirksey. 
and he knocked the uh, the net off its post, so we get a whistle stopping play, 16.27 to go in the first period, no score, and a minute 32 on the connection power play. Visit mycnxn.com for sports apparel and opportunities to connect with athletes in your area, mycnxn.com. Boris to the faceoff circle, and Blake Ryan won by Joe Boris. Boy, he's good in that faceoff circle, isn't he, Marcus? The best one, best one on the team. No question, here's Boris up the ice. Fires it down into the Missouri State zone. Davis out of his net to play it. Tries to clear it out by Boris, and it gets by McSweeney to center ice, and here come the Ice Bears. They've got a two-on-one if they hurry. Good Billy line, line back. Nice job by Billy Line to fire that across the ice and deny the offense opportunity. And now almost a bad turnover there. As number 14, Blake Ryan, their top scorer comes in. He's dangerous. Jack Ryan has nine shorthanded goals on the season already, so you've got to watch out. Even with a man advantage, mm -hmm. they're looking to score. Line, cross rink to Greenberg, missed it as that puck kind of jumped over a stick, but it's picked up by Mike Hansen. Hansen coming in, using his body to shield it. Here's the loose in front. Greenberg couldn't get it, and now Boris going to try to hold it in. He's at the left point. Nice offensive chance there for NIU. Back to Hickey at the high slot. Hickey over to Pickett at the top of the right circle. Pickett in front for Boris. Tried to center it, went over his stick. Here's Hickey at the left point now. Now to the high slot, a shot. Never gets through as that was Guthrie getting in the way. Hickey holds it in. Hickey plays it off the boards now for Hansen. Hansen lost it there for Guthrie. Guthrie going to try to clear it. Pickett dives and keeps it in, but unfortunately he hit it right to J uh, Jack Ryan. Here comes Ryan in shorthanded. Puts a shot high over Alex Hare. Hare might have gotten a piece of that. Here comes Pickett again. 13 seconds on the connection power play. Pickett enters the zone, and now it's going to come back out, and Bach is going to take it. Six seconds. Bach fires a shot on net. That Davis turns away easily. And that's going to end the penalty as Kim's out of penalty box. Both teams at full strength. NIU 0 for 1 on the power play. Billy Line up to Bach. Bach right in front of us at center ice. Checked into the penalty box. Here's Nick Leon. Leon has it taken off his stick by Guthrie. And now they battle for it there. Andy Draper gets it to his teammate, McInnes. Back to Draper. Draper, nice job being taken down there by number 71. That's Rosinski. He's got it in front. A shot kicked wide by Davis. And Rosinski with it again. Rosinski over McSweeney. McSweeney a shot from the point, and that one's kicked up high. Here's Rosinski again. Rosinski a bad angle shot. Davis turns that one wide. Lots of shots from NIU. you got to like this. Good sustained offensive pressure, and they keep it in again. Leon can't hold it now as Guthrie comes out to center ice. He's going to flip it to the far side corner, and Missouri State needs a change. And Billy Lyon's going to touch it up. An icing call, 14-10 to go. No score, but nice offensive pressure by NIU. Yeah, good sequence there. I think it was Rosinski and Leon got about four or five shots off, and that's what you need to do. Get shots on the goaltender, test him quick, and see, and see where his weakness is. We've seen a lot of goalies go down early. Some you go down early, you got to shoot high. Some are high, you got to shoot low. But good sequence there, and they also got bodies to the net. Justin Rosinski taking his first face off, and he's going to be against Adam Otten from Missouri State. It's won by Otten, back to Guthrie. Guthrie off the boards, up to Draper. Draper to center ice, back to Otten. Here comes Otten. He enters his own. Good stick there by Contillo. And Jacobson back there, now Hickey. So Jacobson getting to play a little bit with a second line as well. And now here is a shot from the point that's tipped wide by an NIU player. Hare's down, covers it up. Hare takes exception to Draper going past him, got a piece of him. A little pushing and shoving after the play. 13.45 to go first period, no score. Yeah, to get back to this Ice Bears high octane offense, we talked about how you need to clear out early and you need to clear those rebounds, but if you're NIU, maybe you play a little bit of a neutral zone trap. That may mm. not be your style, but it, do anything you can to not allow them easy access into the zone, kind of like Michigan did to us when we were in Ann Arbor. In just a minute, Marcus, we get another stoppage. I'm going to have you explain what a neutral zone trap is so that people can look for it. Here is Greenberg taking it out of the zone to center ice, gets it up to Bach. That puck jumps over his stick, but he gets it back. Rob Bach checked nicely by Armstrong. Bach is centering pass to Pickett in front, still loose. The goalie's down. Nobody can get a shot by Remley. Shot goes through the crease. And just wide of the net, boy, the Huskies have gotten their chances. Here's Chris Mosley up the ice. Mosley now, a little juke and jive, centering pass, nobody home. Mark Greenberg takes it and flips it to center ice for Aldag to take it. Aldag fires it down, and some of the ice bears are going to change. Hare is going to hold it behind his net and leave it for Hickey. Here comes that four-check pressure from Missouri State. They send one guy down in the four-check behind the net, and the Huskies coming up. And it's turned over to Missouri State. Here they come. Missouri State's Armstrong. No, I'm sorry. This is Kirksey with it. He fires it in there. And a centering pass. Kind of threw it in front. Nobody home. And here's Sadorf. Sadorf's shot. Very weak shot. I think he was yeah. trying for the redirect maybe for Kirksey. As it was, Hare got out there and covered it up. 12-48. Can you explain what a neutral zone trap is in case they try it? We can look for it. Yeah, it's, it's really simple to look for. The D are just going to kind of hang back at the blue line. Usually 
when teams are back on the defense, they just kind of skate back and flow with the players. What a trap does is you stay planted at the blue line or in between the blue line and red line and not allow them to get that puck in. Puck loose in the slot, but now taken away by Huskies number 37, that's Frodima. Here's a shot from the point, goes wide. That shot was put on net by Seedorf. Now McSweeney back with Frodima. Frodo. Frodo. Frodo is what we like to call him. We don't know if he's a hobbit or not. Here's a shot in front. Nice play there by McSweeney to get in the way, and Frodima as well. Frodima normally with the D3 team as Serpico's uh, attempt down into the zone of the Missouri State Ice Bears. Goes high off the glass and down. And now here's Cornier with Bach. Bach in front trying to get some space and is kicked out of there nicely by Seedorf. Now at the right point, Billy Line holds it in. A slap shot from there. Tried to redirect off of Buds' stick. And Buds just kicked it high over the net. Now here come the Ice Bears. Hits the official and Hickey's going to be able to take it. Troy Hickey coming back. Crosses into the zone for Missouri State. Tried to deke out a man there, and the puck is just loose. Leon tried to pick it up. Now Boris takes it away. Boris by the faceoff circle on the right side. Now in the right wing corner, Nick Leon. Leon coming, goes sard across the net to Hanson. Hanson was shut down there. Davis gets down to block it. Puck is loose in the slot, and it's taken away, and we're going to get a delayed penalty called as back behind the net, I believe, is Nick Leon down low. I did not see the call. What's the call? Didn't see it either. I was too paying attention. All the shots on all. It's going to be holding a on holding Mike Hansen. on Hansen. So Hansen goes to the penalty box. And Leon got roughed up there. He's holding the right side of his helmet. Hopefully he's okay. Looks like he is. 11.30 to go first period. Husky's going to be shorthanded for the first time. Here tonight is Hansen's in the penalty box with the holding penalty. And, and last week on a Friday night, the, the uh, Huskies only took one penalty in the first period, and that and, was halfway through the period. And against a team that could score at will like Missouri yeah. State, the Huskies cannot be shorthanded. They're, and when they get the opportunity to clear it, they're going to have to do it. They can't play around with it in their own zone. They've got to clear it. Over on the far side is Jack Ryan. Ryan down low now, back out to the right point, here to the left point for a shot. And it does oh. not get through. They wave the goal off. Hare able to get down. I don't know how he stopped that. It got through his five wow. hole. And then he reached back with the glove and covered it up. The Missouri State bench Ooh. went crazy. They thought it was a goal. But Hare, the, and give Again. the official on the goal line credit. He yep. was looking at it all the way and signaled immediately no goal. Yeah, great save by Hare. It looks like a deflection out in front. Went through his five hole, but sat his big butt right down on the puck. <laughs> now, I, that's in. not nice to say his big his, butt. His padded butt. We'll okay, say that. we'll say that. It's so know, much nicer. I don't think Harold Brown, he's a fit young man. Yeah, I don't think we can say he's got I don't want him hearing that because he might. <laughs> I'm going to play that over and over for I'm him, I'm not Marcus. showing up Monday for the podcast. <laughs> Held it at the left point. A shot in front. Kicked wide. Nicely by McSweeney. Got a stick on it to deflect it. Now here's McInnes. McInnes holds it to the left point And for Barch at the half boards. Back to McInnes to Barch. Barch at the half boards. He's going to pressured nicely by Billy Line there. Good job on the defense for the Huskies. There's McInnes, cross pass to Guthrie, down low for Draper. Draper back to Guthrie, Guthrie holds it in. Back to Draper, Draper across to McInnes. McInnes shot hits Contillo stick, and line clears it out of the zone, 107 on the power play. Husky's gonna change up the entire penalty killing unit. Here comes Draper, Draper knocked off the puck there by Pickett, and Hickey down, Hickey fires it all the way down, and he goes into the Husky bench actually. And a nice catch over there. Uh, I didn't get to see who made that catch. <laughs> Johnny Perillo should yeah. have. He's got the glove, but we've seen him duck out of the way a couple times yeah, when pucks have gone into the net. He did the same thing at OSU. Almost hit poor <laughs> Jessica right in the head. <laughs> so it would be a defensive zone draw for the Huskies to the right of Alex Hare. It is Blake Ryan with Nick Remley. It's won by Ryan. And now down deep, here is number 12, Kirksey. Kirksey holds back behind his own net. Now to the far side, half boards for Jack Ryan. Ryan to the to the high slot for Aldag. Aldag back to Ryan. Ryan a shot, never gets through as Hickey blocks it. And here's Ryan again from the slot and a nice block there by Remley. Laid out, sacrificed the body down low. This is Ryan. Holds in the far side corner on the right wing. A shot in front and it's tipped in by number 17, Jack Ryan. They score. It's a power play goal for Ryan and it's one nothing Missouri State. Yeah, I'm trying to see who was the one that gave him the pass I believe it was number 14, uh, Blake, Blake Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, just found found his brother Jack right on the side of the net. So it went Blake Ryan to Jack Ryan, and they convert on the power play. But one goal is fine. 
you can hold them here, you're looking great for the second period. Well, and they, the Huskies have got to stop yeah. it here and maybe get the equalizer. So they've played really well and hung with them. Here's Rosinski. Boy, he's been impressive early on. Little shot goes wide of the net. And then uh, Rosinski comes back and fires it back through there. Here's McSweeney at the left point. And as a shot on goal, Rosinski in front tried to redirect. Davis out to cover it up. 9.39 to go. First period, 1-0 Ice Bears. Yeah, it was just a little breakdown in coverage there on that Ice Bears power play goal. Uh, Jack Ryan was just left what I mean wide open. right wide open on the wide open. right side of the Adams pass gets there. all the way through gets past about three or four yep. guys that that's gonna happen you're gonna give up power play goals but you can't give up another one at the very least you've got to go into the first period hold down a goal got to contain got to contain and perhaps get the equalizer Wheeler in a far side corner on the left wing battling with a couple of ice bears there they rink it around to Mosley Mosley line there to pressure him now Armstrong here's Wheeler on a four check in as up come Missouri State. Looks like the NIU strategy is to put pressure in their own zone yep. and deny them breakouts, which NIU does, but you see it even more so and probably going to be more important mm -hmm. against Missouri State here today. Billy Line, cross rink to Brendan Maher. Maher fires it down into the right wing corner around for Davis, out of his net to play it back over to the right wing corner for Guthrie. Maher down there, Guthrie now fires it across, tried to hit the man, Justin Kim, but it's taken away. Hickey with a shot from the high slot. Kick side by, kicked aside, excuse me, by Davis. They battle behind the net. Buds back there, working hard as he always does as the Ice Bears now clear it over here to the near side for Mosley. Mosley holds there in the right face-off circle, comes to neutral ice right in front of us. Buds gets a stick on it and takes it away, and it's a turnover. Pickett takes it. Pickett fires it into the left wing corner. Davis out of the net, going to play it again. 8.35 to go, first period, 1-0 Ice Bears have the lead. Serpico putting a little pressure on, and he takes it away nicely from Carson McInnes, but McInnes then comes back. McInnes throws an elbow there that he gets away with, and down now comes Buckheit for Missouri State. Goes across to Kirksey. Kirksey back for Kim. Justin Kim in, and it's a nice stick there by Pickett. Pickett comes out. Huskies got a chance for it. Uh, I guess they had a three on two, but unfortunately one of the players had to go off the ice in Sean Buds. He was at the end of his shift. In the right wing corner, Joe Serpico taken down hard. I believe by number 27 of the Ice Bears, Justin Buckheit. Interference is the call. Absolutely. He went high on him. Serpico's got to maintain his composure, maintain his discipline here. It was not Buckheit. I'm sorry. It was Kirksey. So Kirksey going to get the interference call. There are eight, oh, oh, eight minutes and two seconds to go. Uh, and Kirksey gets the penalty, but we have another connection power play. MyCNXN.com is where you want to go for sports apparel and opportunities to connect with athletes in your area. MyCNXN.com. Huskies 0 for 1 on the power play so far tonight. Boris wins the face off to line at the high slot. Now to McSweeney at the right point. McSweeney holds there off the boards to Greenberg at the half boards. Now to the corner to Boris. Boris backs to the half boards. Now to McSweeney. McSweeney to Boris at the right point. Back to McSweeney at the high slot. McSweeney's shot hits the stick of Jack Ryan. I'm sorry, Blake Ryan, and it goes up. And now into the boards hard. Eric Al Aldag. Puts number 11, That's Mark Greenberg. Greenberg. He's down. And he put that him hard into the boards. Absolutely, that should be a penalty on Eric Aldag. That should be a cross-checking or something, that def hitting a defenseless player. And Greenberg is down immediately. He's moving his legs, and he's looking up. So a good sign that he's got movement and mobility, and he didn't lose consciousness or anything. 134 to go on the power play, but... Missouri State looks like they want to get a little physical yeah. with the Huskies here. Yeah, and if you're the Huskies and you see that happen, that that just wants that should make you want to not lose your composure, but to get back at him, score a goal for that's, Greenberg. That's how you get back, you score a goal. Greenberg is up, and he's coming off the ice, mainly under his own power. He is assisted a little bit. So hopefully he's okay. We see him back real soon. That was a wicked shot. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm with you, Marcus. I don't know how that penalty was missed. That that was clearly a defensive player putting him into the boards, and he went high on him. That's the thing I can't yeah. understand is it'll be a neutral zone draw. And they got four officials out there tonight instead of our normal three. So I don't know how that was missed. Unfortunately, it was. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They're yeah. doing as best as they can. But the Ice Bears control the faceoff. We've got a minute and a half, 90 seconds to go on the connection power play. Huskies have a man advantage with Mark Kirksey in the box. Pickett can't hold that in, and here's Hickey going to go back with it. As Hare's out of the net, he's going to play it. Alex Hare fires it around the boards to pick it. Pick it on the far side corner. And Hare's going to get a, a slash. slashing penalty on Alex Hare. 
So we missed the the interference down here. <laughs> we get a slash yeah. on the goalie. And it is going to be uh, Nick, Nick Leon's going to serve that penalty. So a slash. Again, the officials doing the best they can, and the game moves awfully fast, so I don't mean to be overly critical of no, them. No, but some of them you just have to you have Well, to I have make. to call yeah. it like I see it, you know. I, and <laughs> there's a face-off. And Harris still chirping at the official. Harris got to keep his composure here a little bit, too. So the Huskies get a call missed, as they feel, on Greenberg's penalty. And then uh, they take a penalty of their own, Nick Leon. He's going to serve the slashing penalty committed by Alex Hare. Of course, the goalie can't serve that penalty. Yep. That would be unfair to pull the goalie <laughs> off the ice, I think. Yeah. You'd have to be having some work. excellent penalty killers. Yeah. So four on four hockey for about a minute. Yeah, there's a minute. I think it's 103. The the yep. middle part of that of the uh, the display is burned out, so we never know if it's 108, one minute, 103. We gotta, We're not really we sure. we got to talk to Grumpy about that one. <laughs> you talk to Grumpy okay, about that. Yeah. Remley in the faceoff circle. And he's facing off with Otten. It's won by the Huskies. Picket fires it to neutralize. And again, there they're trying to set up offense. And I guess four on four you do that, but I, if, you can't be too cute with it here. Yeah. Uh, Draper misses the pass, and there's Greenberg on the ice. We like to see that as he comes right back out in his next shift. And Remley puts Draper into the boards over here hard as now the Ice Bears control. Here's McInnes. McInnes checked by Hickey, and he goes down. Hickey clears it to center ice. Here's Remley. And Greenberg coming out. Remley fires a shot on net. That Davis easily turns away. Draper takes it down. And he turns it over there. Nice job by Pickett to get down and break up that pass. As here comes Missouri State coming out. McInnes couldn't get the pass to Guthrie. Now Draper on the far side battling with Greenberg. Great Draper in the right wing corner. Now behind the net. Here is Otten. Otten takes it behind the net. Looking for some offense. Leaves it for Sador. Set up for shot just wide of Hare's net. And over here is Cornier, and he gets it to center ice where Aldag's going to take it. I'm sorry, not, not Cornier. It's Rosinski. I see that seven yeah. on his jersey. Uh -huh. And for a long time, Cornier was the only guy with that 70 number. But Rosinski now at 71. i got to get used to that. Into the zone. Neutral ice. Here come the ice bears. It's Blake Ryan. Ryan with it on his stick. Puts a shot up high. That may have hit the stick at Billy Line as it went high over Alex Hare's net. And there's Kirksey. Kirksey back down low for Jack Ryan. Gets it to Aldag. Back to Ryan. Ryan for, uh, that's uh, Blake Ryan who loses it now from the slot. A shot by Jack Ryan on net. Blocked nicely by Hare. A good save. The penalty to Missouri State is over. They have now nine seconds of power play time. Here's Sadorf. He goes down. Hanson, a nice job taking him off the puck. You got to play the body in that situation rather than the puck, and he did that. Here's Leon taking it, but a good stick there by Ryan knocks it away. Here's Leon again, crosses into Ice Bear Ice, puts a shot kicked wide by Justin Davis. Five minutes to go in period number one. The Ice Bears with a one goal lead, one to nothing. Here comes Lukeman. Lukeman's shot goes to the far side corner where it's going to be picked up by Kim. Here's another shot. And it never gets through as Billy Lyon gets a stick on it, and he gets it to neutral ice, bounces it off the boards in front of us, and it's going to be taken by Armstrong. Ryan Armstrong for the Ice Bears. Back, he's going to leave it for Peter Saro. Saro up to Mosley. Mosley tried to find his teammate Kim, but all he found was Troy Hickey for the Huskies, who fire it back into Ice Bear ice. Taken by Saro for the Ice Bears. And here's Nick Leon to pick it at the left point. Picking a shot, tried to get the redirect. As Wheeler in front, there's a shot by Boris, and a great save by Davis. He's down, blocks it, and gets on the rebound. 4.23 to go, first period, 1-0, Ice Bears. Good job by the Huskies to kill that second penalty. Absolutely. Stay one nothing. Good job and of taking the passing lanes away. You know, Coach Ronaldo talked about that in the pregame, and we've seen it. They are diving, blocking shots. They are taking those passing lanes and those shooting lanes away from the Ice Bears. Yeah, that's what you need to do, not allow easy access and take away the passes. And they've been getting a lot of shots to have the Huskies. Eventually, those are going to start going in. Yes, Serpico and Kirksey on a faceoff, one by Kirksey. Kirksey cross ice here to Buckheit. Buckheit with it. Tried to find his teammate. That He was looking for Kirksey, but Husky got a stick on it. Hickey now. His pass comes off the boards to Pickett. Pickett off the boards up to Cornier. There's 77 Cornier. We'll call him right. Here in is a shot on goal, and in front, it was loose for a moment, but cleared away. Here's another shot goes wide off the boards behind Hare. 
And there's Hickey getting it up to Brandon Maher. Maher, cross ice to Cornier. Cornier back across to Serpico. Serpico a shot on Davis who gets it in the glove. And he's just going to hold on there and get the whistle. 3.42 to go first period. one nothing Ice Bears. If you're just joining us, the Ice Bears scored on the power play at 9.53. Jack Ryan from Blake Ryan. And if you looked at Missouri, stats, yeah. Missouri State's stats, no surprise those no two guys are scoring. No surprising. Blake Ryan, 16 goals, 20 assists so far this year. And his brother Jack, 30 goals and 17 assists. Ridiculous. 30 goals. That's just insane. But when you beat a team 18 yeah, to nothing. Okay. Wouldn't it be five teams with more than ten goals? Yeah. Here the Ice Bears fired into the Huskies' own hair out of his net. He's going to leave it for line. Line takes it, and he turns it over there badly. And a shot and a save by Hare. Adam Ott thought he had the goal as Hare was a little late getting down, but he got the – it was under his pad. Ott started to celebrate, but no official made a, made a call, and Hare lifted <laughs> up the pad. There was the puck. Look what I found. That's right. But not a great turnover no. by the Huskies in their own zone. They cannot do that. Here's Bach. Tried to pass it to himself off of the boards. Was unable to do that. Guthrie battling over there. Guthrie takes a couple of swings at Remley. And not called by the officials. Officials are going to have to tighten this game up. If the Ice Bears can get away with that yeah. stuff, it's not going to be good. Now, we have a better view of the ice than they do. We can see a more comprehensive view. But that, that stuff's got to stop. Mm -hmm. There's no place for that. Yeah. I don't care whether it's NHL, AHL, you can't have that. The Huskies doing a good job not retaliating. Again, the best retaliation is a goal. Remley now at the blue line, had it on his skate and didn't know where it was. And now here come the Ice Bears. It's Jack Ryan in against Billy Line. Line with a good stick and a poke check. Knocks it away as Ryan unable to get a shot off. Boy, that was a prime goal scoring opportunity for Ryan. A shot kicked wide by a hair there. Good scoring opportunity for Jack Ryan. Billy Line up to the task defensively. Boris flips it up into the Ice Bears zone, and Aldag takes it there. We approach two minutes to go here in the first period, one nothing Ice Bears. Hickey fires it back, tried to find Boris, but the puck rolled over his stick. Aldag tries to go up the ice. McSweeney a good hit there on number 21, Barrett. Now at the blue line, here's Blake Ryan. He's taken down nicely by Nick Leon. Huskies getting down on the ice. Here's Sadorf at the right point, a shot blocked nicely by Hickey, and it cannot be taken, tried to get the rebound there, was Blake Ryan, he was unable to do it. Here's Nick Leon, Nick Leon in, slows up, and a good stick by Sadorf to keep, keep Leon from getting a shot there. Now Hickey, a shot from the high slot, and it's kicked back all the way down to Alex Harry. He's going to take it. We've got a minute 35 to go first period, one nothing Ice Bears. Joe Boris lines it up and fires it into the Ice Bears zone. Off the back of the net, Davis plays it. He, now here they come. To center ice, it's turnover by Billy Line, who takes it away. Line at the high slot, a shot just wide and hair of uh, Davis's net. Boris takes it, flips it back. Nick Leon deep in the zone. In front, Hanson. Hanson couldn't get a shot off as the Ice Bears did a nice job knocking him off the puck. Here's Line from the circle. Shot into the breadbasket of Justin Davis. Well, that's a good goal scoring yep. opportunity for the Huskies. You got to take it. 110 to go, first period, 1 0 Ice Bears. It's a nice little line there with Hanson, Leon, and Boris. Uh, Hanson, you got the size. Leon, you got the hands. And Boris, you had the face-off winner. And the grit. And the grit, yeah. I mean, this whole Hard line. working. Uh, hard working line right there. And Huskies have been working hard all night. They've been winning board battles. Uh, and, and again, the good thing about that is that they have not retaliated to some of that physicality. Here's a shot by Wheeler. Block never gets through. Wheeler on the near side half boards. Gets it to Contillo. Plays it down deep. Contillo now to Ruzinski. Ruzinski tried to fire it back behind. Here it is, loose in front. And it's still loose in front, and the Ice Bears are able to clear it up. And not out as it's held in by Pickett on the Husky logo. And now here's a shot. Pickett going to try to keep it in. He cannot. 45 seconds to go first period. Billy Line with it. Off the boards, down into the Ice Bears zone. There's a stray stick in front of Justin Davis. And now it's passed out by Jacob Guthrie with his hand, but it didn't hit his teammate's stick, so you can do that. Here's Rosinski in, into the slot. He's going to be taken down, and we're going to get a penalty. 23 seconds to go first period. Rosinski, aggressive play to the net, and the Ice Bear player had to take him down on a trip. That's what you want to see. Good hard work there by Rosinski. Keep the feet moving, drive to the net, and that's what you see a lot in the NHL. When you guys get those guys that have a breakaway, you keep your feet moving, you're going to draw those penalties. And he did. Let's see who's going to take it. It's going to be number four, Guthrie. So the fourth 
Connection power play for the Huskies. MyCNXN.com, sports apparel and opportunities to connect with athletes in your area. 23 seconds to go first period, two minute minor penalty to Jacob Guthrie for a trip on Justin Rosinski. Pickett from the left point to Hanson. Hanson now to Boris at the half boards, back to Pickett. Pickett holds it in, fires a shot oh. just wide of the net. Oh, I thought they had it there. Hanson with it, he turns it over, unfortunately, to Blake Ryan and Jack Ryan. The two Ryan brothers coming down, and in shorthanded, they are looking for offense. Jack Ryan with it on the far side half boards. Pickett going to just play him into the boards there, and that is the buzzer that, buzzer that will end period number one. A good first period, yep. and we said at the end of the first period, we'd know what kind of game it was. We'd know if NIU was going to be in it and be able to play with the Ice Bears, and they absolutely are only down one nothing. Yeah, they did a really great job. Uh, only taking one penalty, I believe. Yes, or one penalty, uh, a holding penalty on Hanson. Missouri State took four. Yeah, so discipline was there. They controlled the high-octane offense, allowing just that one open net goal there uh, for the Ryan brother. But they did a really good job. They got shots on net, and they're going to start the second period with a minute 40 on the power play. And, you know, I thought the Huskies had lots of opportunities, uh, lots of, off excuse me, offensive opportunities yep. in that period. And you got to believe that if they can just keep putting shots on net, you're going to get one of those to go through. Alex Hare was brilliant in net. Although I would say for a team that scores as much as Missouri State, he didn't have to face a ton of shots. No, his defense did a really good job for clearing pucks. And when he did, when he was challenged, he was up to the test. There was a couple big saves he had to make that were underneath his pads, and he was directing the puck to the corners as well. And Justin Davis, the goaltender for the Ice Bears, comes as advertised. Here's a guy who's eight and three, a 1.92 yeah. goals against, 92% save, uh, save percentage. So uh, this guy has only allowed 21 goals. He's got three shutouts, three and a half shutouts, shutouts on the yeah. season. Um, and so you know, it's going to be tough to score him, but. The way that you score against a tough goalie, pepper him with shots. He's going to let something through. Yeah. Keep firing those shots on net. Yeah, and they sure did pepper the net. And they also got a couple deflections there that could have gone in. There was one yes. there at the end of the first period we th both thought went in for Greenberg. But if you keep doing that, especially on the power play, you're looking good for the second period. Absolutely. Well, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. And uh, when we come back, we'll go over Marcus's keys and talk a little bit more in depth about what we saw in that first period. But don't go anywhere. We're at the first intermission. The Ice Bears of Missouri State have a one to nothing lead over NIU. You're listening to Huskies Hockey on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. Are you looking for a place to get all your AHL news? Then tune in Wednesdays from 4 to 6 and listen to the Chicago Hockey Connection on SportstownChicago.com. We will talk about the Chicago Wolves and the Rockford Icehawks. Analyze every goal, save, and win for both teams, including exclusive interviews of coaches and players, and much, much more. Again, CHC airs Wednesdays from 4 to 6 on SportstownChicago.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Chicago Hockey Connection to get all your hockey updates. There's a place I can get more information about NIU hockey? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. The NIU Hockey Podcast is your source for news about the NIU D2 hockey team. From the first practice... We're talking about practice. To the playoff race... Playoffs! The NIU Hockey Podcast follows your NIU D2 Huskies the whole way. With interviews of NIU players and coaches, the NIU Hockey Podcast gives you an inside look into the NIU D2 Huskies. New podcasts are posted every week. Just log on to www.facebook.com slash NIU Hockey Podcast for more information. The NIU Hockey Podcast... The place for NIU Hockey Talk. That's a great idea. And you were meant to be here tonight. This is your time. Priding ourselves on being in the right place at the right time, it's Huskies Hockey on the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. Back at the Fox Valley Ice Arena, Scott Swartz, Marcus Grosnick are rinkside. And we had a very spirited first period yep. as the Ice Bears of Missouri State lead the Huskies from NIU one to nothing. But when you start looking at a team that um, has scored uh, 74 goals uh, so far in the year to hold them to one in the first period, I would say you can't complain about that. Yeah, it was a, it was a good, successful first period. The discipline was there only taking, I think it was actually two because Alex here took a slash. Oh, that's true. He did, yes, yes. So two penalties to the Ice Bears, four. Uh, haven't converted on the power play yet, but they have a minute and 40 on a curtain power play uh, to start the second period. But the high-octane offense was kept in check. A Alex here, actually both goaltenders 
played as advertised. Yeah, if nothing else, it's a really well played and a really uh, good pace hockey game. Yep. And Missouri State, I think I said, I, I think I said they took four penalties. They only took three. three. NIU took two. Um, and again, as you said, Marcus, the Huskies have a minute 37 of power play coming out of that first period. It would be huge for them to bury one and get the equalizer here as we move along into that second period. Yeah, they really need to get shots in that, and they have been doing that. They've been getting yes. shots and deflections, and like you said, uh, right after the period ended, eventually those are going to start going through. Just get those bodies like Bach and even Leon and Hanson to the front of the net, and, and they're going to do fine. Marcus, let's go ahead and take a minute, review your, your three keys for victory for the Huskies. Tell us how you think they did in the first period. All right, key number one was traffic and deflections on uh, Justin Davis, and like we just talked about, they have been getting lots of shots. They have been getting the deflections. Jake Davis is just played out of his mind again. He's, he's eight and three on the season, 1.92 goals against average. So if you yeah. keep getting those pucks in that, he, they're eventually gonna go yeah, in. Yeah, nothing you wouldn't expect with yeah. him playing that well. So, but the Huskies, I agree with you. I thought they had not only shots, but good shots. They took them from good areas, and I thought that they weren't settling very much mm -hmm. for the easy shot. They were working their offense, working their system, but when they got the shot that they wanted, they took it, and again, they're gonna have to keep doing that. They'll bury one eventually. Yeah, and they uh, and the, the defense also got in on the score, or not scoring, but the shooting with uh, Pickett, Hickey, and McSweeney taking lots of shots from the blue line, but then getting back to their position to play the defense, and that allowed that offensive MSU to come down the ice. Absolutely. How about uh, how about key number two? Uh, key number two, control the Missouri State University high octane offense, and they did. Granted, the one goal was a wide open net, but other than that, the defense played route clearing pucks. And one thing I noticed, I know you talked about it too, they were getting bodies in front of shots. They yes. were blocking lots of shots in the lane. And, and that is not something we saw them do a great deal in the in the first part of the season. No. But they looked like they'd been doing it. Oh, they looked like Nick Jomerson out there. Yeah, they looked really well blocking shots, getting in passing lanes. Uh, Hickey used to stick very well a few times to do a couple poke checks. The other thing, too, is the defensemen in the offensive zone I've seen have been diving to save pucks and keep them in the zone as well. Yeah, and, and I got the feeling like the, 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 um, the Huskies were – beginning to frustrate Missouri State mm -hmm. a little bit. This is a team not used to only scoring one goal in a period. And we'll see if maybe they, they take more bad penalties. Maybe they get out of position. Maybe they start trying to, you know, they're aware of their numbers. Yeah. They, they feel like they should be able to score. Maybe we'll get to see them, you know, play out of their game. But if you looked at this first period, that period, that's Huskies hockey. Yeah, and some of people might look at that and say, well, you're losing one nothing. It was an unsuccessful period. But I don't look at it at it that way. I think it was successful in that they kept them in check and they're still in this game, only and down one nothing. No question about it. Key number three, Marcus. Key number three was the line of Leon Cantillo and Serpico, but I don't think they really <laughs> played in the line all that first period. They were all over the place. With the exception of the Bach, Remley, and Greenberg line, it looked like the other lines were really mixed up a lot. And here's the thing that I like about that, Marcus, and, and you tell me if I'm crazy, but it seems like, A, other teams aren't going to be able to prepare for you if you're able to change guys around. And the other thing now, with their depth at forward, they're going to be able to send waves of guys at you who are fresh yeah. and, and have a fr have fresh set of legs to be able to do that. Now, the difficulty is going to be on defense. We didn't see Frodima very much. I don't think we saw Swastik at all. No. Um, and we saw a lot of line and McSweeney and Pickett and Hickey. Those four really carrying the load on defense. Um, and they're going to have to – and Jacobson as well was out there yep. quite a bit. That's going to be something to watch is their depth at forward and the lack of depth at defense. Yeah, and, like, you're not crazy. It's, it's a great thing to have <laughs> I appreciate you forward. telling me See? that. Thank you. It, it's good <laughs> because, like you said, you can't prepare for that, and you can interchange anybody at the forward position to play at any time. And that's the thing that's going to be great about having these guys is, is the other again, the other teams are just unable to prepare for you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know who's going to play where, when, and who's going to what line combinations. Now, I would assume that Coach Ronaldo will fall into that yeah. eventually. He'll want some consistency in guys to develop that chemistry. But for now, why not try guys and see what happens? It's kind of like what Joel Quenville does with the Hawks. If he yeah. sees that something's not working, he's going to switch that up in the middle of the game. And, and you saw Coach Ronaldo switching stuff up constantly, line combinations in that first period. And at the same time, if you find something that's working, you're going to stick with oh, it. Oh, yeah. You can't change it. Don't fix it if it's not broken. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. We have two minutes to go before the second period, so we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with the second period action. You're listening to Huskies Hockey. It's the NIU Huskies Hockey Radio Network. 
NHL news? Then tune in Wednesdays from 4 to 6 and listen to the Chicago Hockey Connection on SportstownChicago.com. We will talk about the Chicago Wolves and the Rockford Icehawks. Analyze every goal, save, and win for both teams, including exclusive interviews of coaches and players and much, much more. Again, CHC airs Wednesdays from 4 to 6 on SportstownChicago.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Chicago Hockey Connection to get all your hockey updates. Looking for a place to watch the big game? Look no further than Chelios' Pub & Grill. Located conveniently in the Fox Valley Ice Arena, Chelios' Pub & Grill has everything you need for a great eating and drinking experience. Chelios' has an extensive menu featuring favorites like burgers, wings, and beer, as well as original items to keep you coming back over and over. Make sure to bring in your NIU hockey game ticket for 10% off your order. And NIU students, just show your student ID for specials and discounts. Whether you want to watch football, basketball, baseball, or hockey, or you just want to grab a drink after work, Chelios' Pub & Grill is the best place to be. Located inside the Fox Valley Ice Arena at 1996 Kirk Road in Geneva, Chelios' Pub & Grill is the place where true sports fans meet. Back to live action here at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. Second period has started. Huskies on the connection power play. MyCNXN.com. Scott Swartz, Marcus Skrosnick ringside along with our cameraman. Uh, Dan Sanchez doing a great job on the camera as he always does. Huskies turn it over in their own zone here. Shorthanded again. The Ice Bears looking for offense. And look at the ice stop as that is a wet playing surface. As the Huskies get a little home ice advantage yeah. there on the uh, on the wet rink. It's not like Iola where they had a squeegee. Yeah, no kidding. Although it's stopping all over the place. You wonder if maybe they need to do that or at least take a little bit more time yeah. before the faceoff because that puck is coming to a stop in certain places. Here's a chance for a turnover down deep. It's Lukeman down deep. Battling with Pickett. Now Boris takes it out. Boris up to Hickey. Here's Hickey entering the neutral zone. Fires it down in the near side corner. Huskies now moving right to left in their white uniforms with the red numbers. A shot. A bad turnover there by Davis. Wow. And that was a shot. Hansen got a shot as Davis tried to play it up around the boards. Hansen was there and put a shot as Davis was out of his net. Davis, like a cat, goes post to post and gets in front of it. Gets the save. 19.02 to go. Second period. one nothing. Missouri State. Yeah, good lateral movement there by Davis after the turnover. Hands in wide open nut, but Davis with the leather makes the save. Going to have to bury those when you get those chances. Hopefully, and, and I got to believe Davis doesn't give up many of those. No. On the breakout now is Kirksey. Kirksey with Rosinski back on him. Rosinski plays the body nicely. Again, stays away from trying to play that puck. Play the body. If you try to play the puck in that situation, the guy's going to make you pay. Now here's Rosinski into the far side corner. Tries to come to the net. Here's the shot for score! Rob Buck from Justin Rosinski, and the Huskies get the goal on the power play. It's one to one. Good job by Justin Rosinski to go up that far side, beat two ice bears around, gets the puck from behind Davis. And Bach just in the right place at the right time, and that first line continues to produce. And you know what? He went five-hole yeah. on Davis. So maybe they've seen that he did not try to elevate it, just put it down under his pad. Perhaps the Huskies have seen some. At any rate, what we were calling for, Marcus, the equalizer on the power play, and the Huskies have tied it up one-to-one. -one. So now, as they say all the time, here's another shot. Davis comes in and takes the uh, whistle as he covers it up. It'll be an offensive zone draw for Huskies, 18 and a half minutes to go. Period number two, one-one. But you know they say the most important shift is the shift right after a goal. Yeah. So this is going to be important. Missouri State, they know they're in a game now. They they know they yeah. can't take this team lightly. Huskies have to maintain it, but a great job by the Huskies to get a goal. Here's a centering pass in front, taken away. Nice job by Ryan McSweeney to get in the way of that. Also by Brett Wheeler to push his man off the puck. Here's Ryan, a shot, and a good takedown there by Rosinski. Boy, Rosinski impressive in his uh, Husky uh, first couple of games here for the Huskies. Billy Lyon with it now on the far side, near side half boards, and it's turned over here to Peter Cerro. Cerro tried to find his man Barrett, couldn't as it went off of his stick, and McSweeney fired it back down deep. And now here come the Ice Bears again. Armstrong puts it down deep behind Hare's net. Billy Lyon picks it up. Lyon fires it, and it's held in nicely by Armstrong, but now it's taken away by Serpico. Back to center as it's going to be fired back down in by Franco. Lyon winds up around the boards. He's got to get that higher. Got to play it off the boards as it was held in, but a nice job by Wheeler to take the man off the puck and start the Huskies the other way. And now we're going to get a delayed penalty against 
the uh, Ice Bears, and they're going to touch it. I'm not sure what that call is going to be. It's going to be a slash. No, interference. Excuse me. Boy, that, that official has a slow, yeah. deliberate interference call, doesn't he? <laughs> interference. Like, yeah. And it's going to be on number 19, 19. Sato, who goes in the wrong penalty box. <laughs> So 1726, Sadorf. That is Nick Sadorf. And I believe the, the interference was on Maher. So good work and by Maher to uh, get into the zone and draw that penalty. And was aggressive. Yeah. Getting in there. Maher, maybe the quietest guy on the team, but he can play a little mm -hmm. bit. So, those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we ask the players on that podcast every week who's the quietest player. And universally, it's been Always. Brandon Maher, yep. the loudest, however, universally, Mark Greenberg. So. <laughs> <laughs> they got the opposite ends of the spectrum there. That pass misses Boris. But Hansen with a good job taken away. Here's Boris. Boris to Hansen. Hansen from the circle. A shot. Score! Mike Hansen from Joe Boris. And the Huskies take the lead 2-1. to one. Turnover by the Ice Bears in their own zone. Joe Boris grabs the uh, turnover. And Mike Hansen... All day to shoot and snipes it right over the glove of Davis. And 2-1, and we're in it right now, boys. Absolutely. Huskies, two goals in the first three minutes of period number two. And two power play goals. And two power play goals. Good call by you, Marcus. All three goals tonight have been power play goals. And the same line as that. No, new line out there. Top line, Remley, Bach, and Greenberg. Remley, Bach, Brock, and Greenberg with line and McSweeney. Boy, line and McSweeney putting in ice time tonight. Yep. But when you've got defensemen as good as those two are, why, why not? not play them? It's like it's like leaving Duncan Keith out there. They're young. They can play a lot of. That's defense. right. Yeah. They. Yeah. That's right. If that was get, me or you. Well, certainly me. You're younger <laughs> than I am. I don't know about that. But so both teams at full strength now as the Huskies score on the power play. Connection power play working for NIU tonight. Huskies got to clear it, and they do. Here's Remley out to Greenberg. It's center ice. Tried to go back to Greenberg. Or excuse me, back to Remley, but it was taken away by. Uh, number 28, Barsh. Kirksey now tried to fire it out to nobody in particular. I believe he was trying to find his man there. Um, that's number 18, Lukeman. And it just got too far away from him as it's an icing call. So we'll go all the way to the other end of the ice. An offensive zone draw for the Huskies. 16-12 to go. Second period, 2-1 NIU. Yeah, the Ice Bears just look all out of sorts. Not getting anything set up in the offensive zone. And the Huskies, creating turnovers is what you need to do against a high-octane team. And they're stopping them in the neutral zone as and, well. Yes, they are, but they're not playing that trap. They're just uh, playing it, good man-to-man. -man. I was just going to say <laughs> that. It's just man-to-man. -man, but they are playing on the top of their game as uh, <clears throat> MSU wins the faceoff and kicks it to center ice. And now the, Hus the Huskies try to fire it back in, but it's taken away by the Ice Bears. Here's Hickey with it. Hickey goes off the boards. Nick Leon going to try to catch it and keep it away from Buckheit. Buckheit and Leon battle in the corner on the far side. Now it's taken away. This is Lukeman. Lukeman up to Barsh. Barsh tried to play it in front, but Hickey was there. And here's that man-to-man, -man, a turnover almost to Boris, but the Ice Bears maintain control over there. It's Mosley. Mosley for Aldag. Back up here, this is Cerro. Cerro into the boards by Leon nicely. Huskies finishing their checks well, keeping guys off the puck. Pickett back down deep with uh, Mosley. They were battling a little bit. Pickett frustrating Mosley, a centering pass, but unfortunately for the Ice Bears, it hit Joe Boris. And now we get a whistle stopping play as the net came off. It's morning. Mosley yep. is unhappy by the fact that Pickett got away. And I think Pickett probably should have had a hold <laughs> there because he held onto the stick and uh, he held onto the leg and the arm. Yeah, and he well. got away with it. But you know what? We saw the officials miss yeah. one against MSU. So things are evened up. They usually do. The elder statesman gets away with it. <laughs> That's right. 15-12 to go. Second period. 2-1 Huskies. We're back to live action. As that is Anthony Contillo. And he blew, blows out a tire a little bit. Rosinski fires it down into the Ice Bear zone where they're going to take it. This is number 23, Franco. I'm sorry, no, it's 25, Cerro. Wheeler at center ice gets it to line. Line back to Wheeler here on the near side, half boards just ahead of him, and that enables the Ice Bears to clear it out of the zone. Cross ice pass, and line taken down there. Now here in is in front, a shot save, Hare, 
And a rebound was loose for a little bit. Barrett got the uh, loose puck, but he couldn't get it to his forehand. And now it's turned over. Here's Ryan. Blake Ryan enters his own left face-up circle. Shot saved by Hare. Rebound loose. Brett Wheeler pushes his man into the boards nicely. They battle up the ice. Here's Rosinski. Rosinski trying to hold on to it. Rosinski now loses the puck. And now the Ice Bears lose it. Here's Contillo going the other way. Fires it down. The Huskies get a change. Getting really chippy out it there. It is getting Wheeler chippy. Getting chippy too. And now here's a, a, a checking attempt by Buds held in there by Pickett. We have a delayed penalty now. It looks like the coach is getting a T. Wow. Yes, he is. So. That's the first I think I've seen this season. Yes, no question. Usually they let the coaches uh, harp as long as they want. So. Marcus, I've never seen that. Why don't you tell us what's going to happen here? I'll be honest. I've never even seen this one. <laughs> so we'll see if somebody yeah. serves a penalty. I'm guessing it should be a, at least a two or maybe even a five. That'll be interesting to see what we what we have. Yeah. Now, I've watched a lot of hockey, but you watched way more than I have. So for that to happen. Usually it's just a bench minor for the coach in the NHL. It's a bench minor two minutes. I'm not yeah. quite sure what this and is. And we are going to get a minor yep. penalty as Armstrong's coming off. So a, a technical, I guess you could call that? I guess, yeah, or a bench, a bench uh, minor. Yeah, I guess it's got to be a bench minor. I'm sorry, fans, we've never seen that before. Yeah, two-minute bench minor on the coach. So the Huskies on the connection power play again. It's been good this period. They're two for two this period. The Ice Bears control off the faceoff, and they flip it down into the zone, hair out of his net to play it. He's going to rink it around to Rob, to, I'm sorry, to uh, Troy Hickey. Hickey to Brian Pickett behind the Husky net, waits for things to set up. Hickey using that net to screen. And a break, long breakout. Tried to find Hansen. And Hansen going to go down and play it against Davis. Davis up here to Greenberg. Greenberg on the far side half boards. Holds there to Hansen behind the net. Hansen back to Greenberg in the right wing corner. Oh, and Greenberg tried to hit Pickett at the point, and he whiffed on the puck and enables the Ice Bears to clear it all the way down. I noticed Jake Davis is kind of like Mike Smith from the Coyotes. Really loves to play that puck behind the net. Yeah, he does. Hare does that as well. And here's a shot by Pickett all the way down to the other end. And it's rinked around. Hickey cannot hold it in as it's coming down. Again, now out of Hare's net. He plays it. Pickett off the boards, back up to center ice. Where it's taken away by Eric Aldag. He goes, Hickey knocks it out of the air. And we're going to get a penalty now. Another T. <laughs> and I think, did somebody just get thrown out? I thought he just said and pointed off for somebody. I think Greenberg's going to get the T. So Greenberg gets the T. I've never seen this. That's good. We got to ask Coach about the podcast. Absolutely. We'll ask him about it tomorrow yeah. before the game. So at four on four hockey for the next 55 seconds, this is, I'm speechless. Yeah. Anybody who knows me knows that I don't get speechless very <laughs> often. I've never seen this. I'm guessing the two T's are just for chirt, for complaining at the at the refs too long. I'm guessing that's what the bench might. I just are. can't figure out what the Huskies would be complaining about. I didn't see anything bad. I didn't either. I don't know. Maybe we got to Joe West out there as an official. Oh gosh. If you're a baseball fan, you know that you hope to high heaven. That's not the case. So anyway, two technical penalties. I keep wanting to call them technical fouls, yeah. but we're not playing basketball here as that puck is cleared out. And here's Wheeler. Wheeler with a chance in. Wheeler in all alone. Shot taken down by McInnes. And why isn't that a penalty? Well, I think that he did it legally, and I think some of that Wheeler did on his own. It did not seem like he had, he was, you know, completely yeah. stable. I don't think the other guy took him down. McInnes, I don't think, took him down. So I'd say that's a good non-call. As much as I'd love to see Wheeler yeah. with a penalty shot, I don't think that that would have been the right call. 12 minutes to go, and the penalty for the Ice Bears is over. So 105 of power play for Missouri State. Puck is behind them, now next to the Missouri State net. There's Guthrie to Armstrong. Armstrong, with speed, puts a shot wide of Hare's net. Lyons swats at the puck, tries to clear it, but he can. It's held in by Sador. Sador to Ryan, now to his brother, Blake. Back to Jack. Jack holds there 
on the far side half boards. To Sadorf, now to, to Ryan, a shot. Here up and it scores. Tipped in there by number 14, Blake Ryan. His brother Jack with the shot and Blake with the goal. Yeah, just a tip out in front. It looked like it went up and over Alex here that time instead of through the legs. And now this time, MSU counters on the power play, 2-2, and I believe all four goals scored on the power play? You are correct. All four goals have been scored on the power play tonight. So Huskies' penalty kills usually been pretty good. They're going to have to tighten it up a little bit here. Their power play's been good. Usually it's been the other way around. Yeah. The power play's been suspect. The penalty kill, good. At any rate, 11.20 to go in the second. We're tied at two, brand new game. Here's Jack Ryan in with some speed, puts a bad angle shot through, was pressured nicely by Brian Pickett. And now here's Jack Ryan again. Ryan taken nicely off the puck by Hanson. A shot and a save by Hare. Whistle stopping play 11.06. Boy, the Ryan brothers, as advertised, lots of offense tonight. Lots of offense from the Ryan brothers. And it seems to me now that they've scored that goal, MSU has definitely got the momentum. Yes, they and do. And NIU is kind of spinning their own wheels in their own zone. Which is the opposite of what we saw. So the Huskies going to have to weather this storm a little bit. Rosinski in the faceoff circle. He loses it, however to number 23, Franco, on the far side. Here in front, that's number 11, Otten. Otten can't locate, now does, throws it in front, taken away nicely by Hickey. Hickey tries to come up, and Hickey tried to stick handle there. I'd like to see him instead yep. just fire it out of the zone. Gets it out though, nonetheless. Yes, he does. Here that comes now, Cerro. He puts a shot, Hare blocks it, and he's gonna cover that up. 10.39 to go second period, 2-2. Two -two. Huskies are Again, spinning their wheels in their own zone. Even it looks like they're the uh, Missouri State's on a power play, even though it's a full strength right now. Yeah, that's the thing that's dangerous is when you have a team with that kind of offensive ability, you don't want them to find that rhythm. We talked yeah. about the fact earlier that they were struggling to find any rhythm, and now they seem to have found it. You've got to withstand this because if you can't, they could score two or three in a hurry. And Coach Ronaldo puts that first line out there. See if they can uh, get some magic back here, get well, up 3-2. And as far as I'm concerned, the thing we want to watch is who are the defensemen, and no surprise, it's Lyon and McSweeney again. Your top two defensemen, no question, maybe along with Pickett, I would say, is in yep. that group. As it's cleared out, now it's center ice. Here come the Ice Bears. And here's a shot by Draper, kicked wide by Hare. Rebound loose to the right of Hare. Draper with it there. Draper leaves it for Otten. Otten taken nicely off the puck. By line, now he gets it back here at the high slot. It's Franco. Franco winds up, tried to redirect that. He would have had to redirect that of about five sticks and skates as it never gets through, and the Huskies get it to center ice. Here's Bach. Bach turns it over at center ice, unfortunately. Luckily, nobody back except for McSweeney for the Huskies. Yeah, I'm Bach. I want to get that puck in deep and possibly get a change. Absolutely. Here's Remley on the near side in front of us. Remley goes to the far side corner now where it's going to be taken away by or taken by Guthrie of Missouri State. Guthrie tries to get it up and hits Remley, who keeps it in. And there's a board battle here. Remley and Bach. Remley now battling with Justin Kim. Things continuing to get chippy. And, you know, Remley must be uh, pretty upset because yeah. we don't see him get physical like that. He's one of the most disciplined guys on this team. But yeah. I think there's only so much you can take after a while as it looked like Justin Kim, who's already taken a penalty tonight, was maybe delivering a little bit too much on Remley over there in the corner and, and continued after the whistle. I think that's what Remley took exception to. Yeah, and there's, there's not going to be a penalty, which is fine. Let them, yeah. let them iron it out themselves. Yep, but I think so. Like you said, Remley, I don't think anybody did anything deserving of a penalty over there. No, and like you said, Remley's a, not a guy that's going to fight, but eventually that picking on you is going to take a toll. Absolutely. We're under nine and a half. Second period, 2-2, two -two, Huskies and Ice Bears. Good hockey game here tonight at the Fox Valley Ice Arena. Thanks for joining us. Scott Swartz, Marcus Grosnick, and Dan Sanchez on the camera. Here come the Ice Bears. Mosley. Mosley shoots a blocker save nicely by Hare. Brandon Meyer fires it to center ice and clears it out. Too many men on the ice. For yes, the ice Bears. I was just going to say that looked like a player going to the bench. Yep. And he touched it and a too many men on the ice penalty. That's my favorite signal in hockey. This one, the five and the one. It's the most easy one to recognize. That's right. <laughs> They have this many. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's going to be, I'm sorry. It's going to be. too easy. It's, it is. It is too easy. So we're going to have another connection power play. The Huskies have been dynamite on the power play in this period. Joe Boris, what a surprise, wins the faceoff. And the Huskies rink it around far side for Troy Hickey at the right point. Hickey holds there. 
and he's going to rink it down deep for Boris. Boris and Greenberg. Greenberg now battling down there with, that was number 19, Sadorf. And the Ice Bears cleared all the way down. Hare out of his net to play it to Hickey. Hickey behind the net. Pressured there by Kirksey. Grand Here's Boris. Grandpa, we like to call Brian Pickett the other states. <laughs> That's right. In the zone. Here's now Boris in the far side half boards in the right wing corner. Now to the half boards. Boris to the high slot for Hansen. Hansen winds up a shot. Score! Mike Hansen, that may have been redirected by Hickey or Pickett in front. They're actually going to give the goal to Hansen. The number two went up from the ref. Hansen with the goal. And just like that, the Huskies get the lead again. It's 3-2. to two. What a rocket by Mike Hansen right in front of the Coca-Cola sign. Winds up, had all day. I believe he was set up by either Greenberg or Boris. Greenberg, I Greenberg. believe. If there's going to be an assist, it should be to Greenberg. And, wow, just a great setup for a one-timer. And we get the goal, 3-2, 8.26 left. Absolutely. Just what the doctor ordered. The Huskies were spinning their wheel, but they got an offensive chance. Here's Jack Ryan. You know he's not sitting on that. And the Ice Bears now control in the zone. The far side corner, it's Buckheit down deep for Jack Ryan, the leading scorer for the Ice Bears, probably one of the leading scorers yep. in the conference. Billy Lyon gets it up to Rosinski, who passes it to himself. You can do that. And Wheeler into the boards by Armstrong. It's down deep behind the Ice Bears net. There, Buckeye took a swing at it, but couldn't get it on. Contillo gets it to Rosinski in front. Rosinski back to Contillo. A shot. Oh, and Davis goes wide with the pads. Boy, the Huskies had a golden opportunity there. Give Justin Davis, the goalie for the Ice Bears, credit. That's probably his best save of the night. That, that whole line there is working really well together tonight. I think Ronaldo's going to stay with it. And how about the new guys tonight? Tillo and Rosinski and even Leon, too. Absolutely. Opportunities. Here's Wheeler just kicks it into the zone. Davis looked like he was a little bit off his balance there yep. as he went down, fell down to block that puck. Davis not used to giving up three goals a game again. He's got under a, he's got a 1.92 goals against average. So the Huskies almost have doubled his yep. average goals against as the Ice Bears control. And so you've got to wonder if he's talking to himself behind that mask a little bit. Alex Hare out of the net. Tried to ring it around to Hickey, but unfortunately it hit Hickey. And the Ice Bears going to control. Franco and Otten get it. Now pick it. Grandpa up the boards. And a nice stick by Bach to flip it up as McInnes was going to try to hold it in there. And Bach got a stick to it and flipped it to neutral ice. Greenberg now it's at center ice. Tried to flip it to a teammate, but unfortunately found Guthrie. McInnes with a shot down deep. Hare rinks it around. And it's Pickett over there on the far side half boards. Pickett to Remley. Remley at center ice. Back to Bach. Bach off the boards here to Hickey. Hickey putting a lot of time on the ice today. All those Pickett. defensemen are. Hickey, Pickett. Here's a shot from Remley. And I believe that was the sticks or the blocker save as that one goes up into the ice or into the into the ice. Into the stands. And it's 6.14 to go, second period. Huskies have the lead 3-2. Kind of surprised that isn't a delay a game. I don't think that touched any Husky sticks. Yeah, I'm not sure. They, they may, I guess they're going to say that he's probably not doing it intentionally. Yeah. Usually in the, when you watch NHL games, you see that happen. You see everybody on the bench. Oh, the everybody ball. wants it, yeah. yeah. McSweeney holds it in at the left point, but unfortunately can't be held in again. Here's McSweeney again. Flips it to the far side corner, but it's taken back there by Guthrie. Now Boris turns and finds Nick Leon. Leon enters the zone. Tried to pass it to Hansen, but a good job by number three, McInnes. There's Frodima. Gets it in front. Hansen with another shot. Boy, Hansen almost had another empty, uh, an open net there. And Hansen has two goals already. Would have been a hat trick. Here's Barch. Barch and McSweeney and Frodima, a great job playing the body, knocking him off. Boy, the defensemen for the Husky are playing out of their minds tonight. And the new guys. Absolutely. Everybody's playing well, but give those defensemen credit, McSweeney and Hickey and those guys. Here's a shot into the glove from Aldag. And now McSweeney getting into it a little bit as it looked like that player, I think that's on for Missouri State, came in. No, I'm sorry, that's not Otten, it's uh, John Lucas. 
Lucas did a flyby on Hare. And on Hare, that's right. A, Boy, you got to tell you what, you got to like that from McSweeney. Not doing anything bad enough to take a penalty, but basically enough to say, hey, you know what? You're not doing that yeah. to my goaltender. Just protecting your goaltender. You, you see that through every team we play, not just the Huskies. And you know, we were gonna, we were gonna, we were talking about the defenseman, but there's McSweeney, McSweeney and Line, Pickett, Hickey, Jacobson, Jacobson Frodima. These guys are playing just fantastic hockey for the Huskies tonight. 5.26 to go, second period. Huskies with a one-goal lead. Rosinski wins the faceoff to Cantillo. There's his speed as he got through a couple of ice bears. Now Barsh for the ice bears, back up the ice. Kirksey tried to get it as that one is off a hickey stick into the Husky bench. And so whistle stopping play, 5.12 to go, second period, 3-2 Huskies. Yeah, J Greg Jacobson, like uh, you heard in, or you didn't hear, but Coach Ronaldo and Goldsmith both said that he had his best weekend at Ohio State on defense, which we all know is where he's most comfortable yeah. at. Yeah, the, the words that the word that Coach Ronaldo used during the podcast this week was, he's home. Yeah. And I would agree with that. Uh, and he, you know, give him credit. He tried at the forward, and it wasn't that he played poorly, but there's a need at defense. He's played defense. Yep. And he's obviously more comfortable there. Wheeler goes hard into the boards over here from Mosley, and Wheeler is still down. Here's Rosinski. Rosinski in front, a shot, and a save by Davis. Wheeler still down right here in front of us. It was a legal hit by Mosley as he went to the chest. And you know, sometimes that's just gonna happen. Yep. Wheeler is down, trainer out. We've got four, under five minutes, 4.54 to go. But a real, and again, it's a clean hit. It's like a player taking out the second baseman in baseball. Yep. Sometimes you just get hurt. Just, so hopefully just Wheeler's gonna be all right. If you're just joining us, We've had five goals scored, all but one have been on the power play. The uh, Missouri State scored first with 9.53 to go in the first. Jack Ryan from his brother Blake at 9.53 to go, and it was 1-0. Early in the second period, Rob Bach scores from Justin Rosinski, and it was tied at one. Then about a minute and a half later, Mike Hansen from Joe Boris made the Huskies lead 2-1. to one. At 11.24 to go second period, Blake Ryan from his brother Jack so they flipped it there, put it in the back of the net. It was two to two. And then Mike Hansen with a laser, as yeah. Dr. Eva would say, Woo. a laser from the top of the Coca-Cola logo there at the high slot. Yeah. And it got all the way through. Davis never saw it, and it got under him through the five hole. And that's where we are. It's three to two. Yeah. Wheeler still down on the ice yeah. here in front of us. Now he's getting up on all fours, and now he's up. And he's going to skate off. Yeah, he's probably going to go off the ice. Yeah, he doesn't necessarily look too confident of where he is right now. As, uh, it's a bit of a struggle. Now he's under his own power now. He's gonna, I think he's going to be all right, but with 4.54 to go in the period, yeah. no, no reason to be out here. Send him off. And, again, mostly clean hit. Yep, clean and, hit. And, and that happens. And, again, it, it's a tough game. Guys are going to get hurt. That's why we're up here, not down there. Yeah. So you at least that's why I'm hit? up here. So hey, if I got hit, I'd if either one of us got hit like that, <laughs> yeah, that's the end of our hockey careers. Well, yeah, no question about that. <clears throat> Back to live action, and the Ice Bears. Nope, it's going to be controlled by McSweeney for the Huskies to line. And again, we can't talk enough about that defensive pairing. As Cornier up to Serpico, Serpico to Buds. So that's a new new line there. Yep. Buds, Serpico, and Cornier on the ice. Third and fourth line combinations there. Yep, lots of depth though for the Huskies, especially at forward. Now here's a potential two on two the other way as it's gonna be in here, Cerro, but a nice job by line to get in front of that and kick it wide. And again, boy, you just can't say enough about guys like Line and McSweeney and Pickett, the defense playing well. Here's Cornier in the near side half boards, loses the puck. Kim tried to take it away, but now it's flipped to center ice by Serpico to Buds. Buds cross ice to Kyle Cornier. Kyle Cornier around the uh, the uh, McInnes check, and he put a shot on net. Davis gloves it, holds on. Four minutes flat to go in the period. Three two Huskies. Again, the defense playing really well, getting opportunities in their own zone. Good poke checking is what I've really noticed, taking pucks away in the offensive zone and just getting in the way. You know, yeah. we, we heard Coach Ronaldo say it in the first in the pregame. You gotta get in the passing lanes and getting the shooting lanes and. You know, they've obviously done that. Here's Pickett from the high, the right point, excuse me, a shot that Davis kicks wide. And here's Hickey now, fires it back down into the Ice Bear zone. Under four minutes to go, second period, 3-2 Huskies. Hi. McGinnis 
up here. This is Barrett. Yep. Barrett at the right point. A shot. Tried to go in front for Ryan. Hare got that through, and a nice job by Pickett on defense. Pickett rode Jack Ryan right off the puck. Here's Greenberg. It's a two-on-one the other way. He's got Bach on his right. Greenberg, oh, and a nice job by Guthrie. Centered pass. Missed the stick of Bach, but give Guthrie the credit. Jacob Guthrie got in and knocked it off the stick of Greenberg. I think Greenberg wanted to shoot that. Yep. And a nice defense by Jacob Guthrie. As well as Brian Pickett to get that puck out of the zone with no stick. Definitely, yeah, it, absolutely. As that one goes all the way down, we're going to get an icing call. 3.08 to go, second period, 3-2 Huskies. This last three minutes is going to be key here. You cannot give up the equalizing goal. You've got the momentum. You want to take that to the locker room for the last 20 minutes. Huskies with a one-goal lead. Let's see if they can maintain it. Remley to the faceoff circle against Otten. Huskies again moving right to left. Ice Bears left to right. Ice Bears in the maroon uniforms. Huskies in the white and black. Puck is down one by Otten to Sador. Sador across the ice to Aldag. A shot blocked nicely by Hickey in front. Taken away by Greenberg. Greenberg to the neutral zone. Flips it down into the far side corner. Huskies going to change it up. Good job there. It was at the end of the shift. And so he didn't try to do too much. Just flipped it down to get that change. Here's Draper. Evades the check from line. It goes back behind the net. And McSweeney around. McSweeney to Hansen on the near side half boards. Hansen clears it to Boris at center ice. Boris turns around, almost turns it over, but then gets it nicely to McSweeney, who gets it over here to Nick Leon. Leon evades the check, turns around, and finds his man line. Line all the way up the ice, tried to find Hansen, and it's going to kick wide of the net by Davis. Sador for the Ice Bears has it. Into the neutral zone for Billy Line. Line fires it back into the zone. Here come the Ice Bears. Billy Line now picks it up off of his skate. Oh, almost turned it over. Was able to locate. Sadorf with it. Gets it to Aldag. Aldag has it kick off of Boris to Leon. Oh. And there, we're going to get an offsides call. Yep. As I believe the Huskies are saying that hit a player for the Ice Bears, correct? I believe they're saying, well, the puck went right off the referee, the linesman's skate. And from this angle, it looked like the puck actually stayed in the zone when Leon took it. They're going to say it exited yeah. the zone, but here's Rosinski in the faceoff circle. He wins the faceoff, but he wins it right to number 27, Buckeye to the Ice Bears. So it's a faceoff win, but he wins it to the other team. As that one goes back, no icing going to be called, so Hare out of the net, plays it up to Serpico here in the near side half boards. Serpico out of there, wins that battle, gets it to center ice. Pickett now takes it. Brian Pickett into the zone, stops at the right point. And a wrister here in front oh. for Rosinski. Oh, and it just missed him. Rosinski throws it to the net. And Contillo was in front there. Oh, a nice pass there from Pickett. I like and how the Rizinski. defense gets involved. Absolutely. Yeah, you say that all the time, Marcus. You want to see the D involved. Pickett certainly involved in that offense there. A shot, weak shot from the backhand. And it's loose now in, in the slot. Taken away by Rosinski as we approach 1.15 to go. Second period. Huskies nursing a one-goal lead. Serpico's shot goes wide. Here's Rosinski on a far side. And now that's going to be a penalty, I believe, on Contillo as he rode. Uh, let's see, that's number 16, Lucas, into the boards. So Anthony Contillo gets the penalty. Two minutes for elbowing. Two minutes for the elbow. Yeah, Contillo not happy with that, but the Ice Bears get a two-minute power play at the end of the second period. So for the remainder of this yep. period, the Huskies are going to be shorthanded, and this is a dangerous situation. You want to go to the locker room up 3-2. to two. You frustrated the Ice Bears, but if they get back to even here, you never know what's going to happen. You it's cannot give game. them this a goal. That's right. That's right. So Huskies lead 3-2, to two, 109 to go, and they're shorthanded now it's as Anthony Contillo last played at the University of Rhode Island on their Division I club team. Looks like Remley and Greenberg. Billy now, wait a minute. Here's Frodima going to come off as well. But it's still a five on four. Hmm. Not quite sure what that's no, about. No, I'm not sure what that's about either. Here's a shot over Hare's net. That shot came from Sadorf. Jack Ryan here in the right face off circle. A shot. And Hare got the blocker on it. It goes up into the net. We get a whistle stopping play. 56 seconds to go. 3 2 as the Huskies lead it, but they are shorthanded for the remainder of the period. What I think might have happened, Cantillo might have gotten a five. Even though it's not up on the board since there's only less than a minute left, 
and Frodima is serving the uh, two-minute minor. Well, the, the official made the, this motion, like an offsides yeah. in football. I'm not sure what that is. And I'm not sure why Frodima serves it. He was not on the ice. Well, anyway, we'll get it sorted out. So a couple things we've never seen before. Yep. Yeah, do we our homework for tomorrow. I guess we do, yeah. Here we were hoping for a nice quiet night at home and <laughs> get to oh. bed early. Not going to happen. Yeah, as we've night. got 45 seconds to go, and there is Sadorf leaves it for Jack Ryan. Ryan back down deep to Kirksey. His shot goes through the crease and wide. Here's Blake Ryan to Aldag. Blake Ryan to his brother Jack. Now to Aldag to Jack Ryan on the near side half boards. He holds there, 27 seconds to go to Blake. This is Aldag, Aldag down low to Jack Ryan, comes around, sets it up, a nice block by Troy Hickey as that shot never gets through. And we get a net. whistle stopping play. Net off the moorings, And the I net's believe. off the moorings. Yep. So the officials, you know, I, it's interesting. They've made a couple of calls we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And at times they seem to let him play, and at other times it seems like little things they're yeah. stopping it for. I didn't see the net come off its moorings, and hair shook and it wasn't off its moorings. Yeah. So I, but I guess better to be safe than sorry. Guthrie winds up from the point, and this shot never gets through it, kicks up high. Barch with a shot from now. That was McInnes, and it's cleared all the way down. And that's going to end period number two as the Huskies get three goals in that period. And they go to the locker room leading three to two. Marcus, your thoughts on period number two? Better period than the first period. I mean, you get three goals all on the power play. So the power play's working. PK maybe get a little bit better uh, clearing pucks. But other than that, very solid period going up 3-2 into the third. I would agree with that. We're going to uh, have my interview I conducted with Steve Casson, the MSU broadcaster, in just a minute. So before we get to that, Marcus, um, would you give us your, the three keys and how the Huskies did that period? Yeah, traffic and deflections in front, of, uh, in front of Justin Davis. And like you said during that period, we've almost doubled his goals against average with three goals. So we're doing a good job there. Just continue. Don't don't fix what's not broken with the shots and the deflections. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. How about uh, number two? Key number two, control the offense. Only one goal in that second period. And, and not a ton of shots. And not a ton of shots. The defense was clearing pucks. Alex Hare was on his game looking sharp as he always does. So if they can continue that and keep those uh, brothers in check, you're going to do good for the third. And the third star? The third, third star. Was <laughs> third, third key, star. excuse third, me. Third key was uh, Nick Leon, Cantillo, and Serpico's line. Again, we talked about how lines have been switching up, but I'll just... Talk about those those players. Yeah, Nick Leon, great hands, uh, getting pucks in deep. Cantillo with his speed is working really well. And and what can you say about Pico, one of the most hardworking guys on the team? Yeah, they, they're, they're playing well. Boy, the new guys are playing well. The I, I hesitate to use the word old, but the guys <laughs> who've been on the team for a while. But, you know, we've talked about... Contillo and Leon and Rosinski a lot tonight, but then we've also talked Hanson yep. and Boris and Greenberg, and what a what a great thing for the Huskies to be able to have more guys now to add to that. And and and, and then of course the thing I would add that's impressed me is the defensive play all night. Yeah. Brian Pickett, Greg Jacobson, Ryan McSweeney, uh, uh, Troy Hickey, um, uh, I'm, I'm missing Billy Line, and and Nick Frodima. Those guys, I tell you what, those guys have absolutely played the best game I've seen them play. Again, it's evidenced by the fact that it's 3-2. to two. Yeah, and it's not even just, like, one defenseman that's been playing well. It's been the whole defensive core that's played outstanding this whole game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, of them, all of them to a man. So um, at, before the game started, I had the opportunity to sit down with Missouri State broadcaster Steve Casson, and he told me quite a bit about the MSU uh, hockey team, and so we're going to hear that interview right now. Here's my interview with MSU broadcaster Steve Casson. Here at the Fox Valley Ice Arena, and we are talking with the broadcaster for the Missouri State Ice Bears, Steve Casson. Steve, thanks so much for your time. You guys come into action here against NIU. You're you're 17, three and two so far in the year, and uh, you guys have been blowing team out teams out. This is a t this is a team that can fill up the net, um, and and a couple of guys do it. I think a little bit more. Uh, noticeably than others uh, uh, Kyle Draper is or excuse me Andy Draper and then you've got the Ryan brothers Jack Ryan and Blake Ryan what do these guys do that makes them so effective and able to score so much here in, in what's a really a tough league the uh, the, the mock in the ACHA 
Well, you mentioned Andy Draper. By the way, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. You mentioned Andy Draper. He is a junior player, so he's uh, been around. And it's really interesting when you talk about college players. Some of the players that play in juniors, theoretically, juniors are supposed to be a higher level than college. Right. But in reality, it's not. Mm. It is because you're there and people pay to see right. you versus college. Uh, but in reality, once you move on from juniors, which is a, a little bit of a higher level hockey than college, you now move into the next level. And when you have guys that come from juniors, they have a little bit uh, better way of uh, understanding systems and structures. And so it's a, it's a completely different situation. Andy Draper's one of those guys. And you mentioned Draper, 17 goals, 12 assists. He has five power play goals, three yeah. game winning goals. But when you talk about the uh, Ryan brothers, Jack and Blake, in reality, these are kids that came from CBC, and everybody knows CBC in St. Louis is a very powerful yeah. high school hockey team. So that's where they come from. But you would think by noticing them, with Jack Ryan having 30 goals, 17 of six, six power play goals, nine shorthanded goals, <laughs> and Blake Ryan with 16 goals, 20 assists, five power play goals, two game winning goals, you'd think they played together as brothers for years. And that's really not true because mm. they started out, and then from eight years old, is when they stopped playing with each other and they did not get back together playing until two seasons ago with really? Missouri State. So you look at them and you say, these guys have been together forever. No, they just, as brothers, they know how to play with each yeah. other. And they had a great center in Dylan Clark who's not with the team for this semester. So now it's gonna be kind of a fit to see who is, uh, actually he was more of a wing than a center, but they're going with Blake Ryan being the center, but they're gonna see who they can use on a wing now and decide how's that going to work. So uh, it, for tonight's game, they're gonna go ahead and uh, I, I call it a tryout, but how can you try out against these guys? But uh, <laughs> Jack Barrett, the uh, senior out of Oakville, but you look at this Missouri State team, and this is a team that has set lifetime records for the history of the team yeah. this season. Uh, their best starting season uh, for the first half of the semester, 17-5. and five. That is the best season of any Missouri State hockey team. You have to go back to 2007 and 8 when a 14-5 and five team mm. was on the, on the boards then. This is a team that has, as I mentioned, shorthanded goals. Wise. They have scored 20 shorthanded goals and not given up one yet this season. It is strange to say, and probably for you as a broadcaster too, when they're shorthanded, you say, oh, when are they going to score a goal? <laughs> you know, you, you can't, mentality-wise, you can't look at that and say, okay, they have an opportunity to score a goal. But it's not that they can't score at five on five. They can. They love, the Ice Bears love four on four. Yeah. You know, any type of situation, this team eats it up. and. If you look down the line, and uh, I can only tell you that it's going to get better uh, with the recruitment that is happening for uh, next season and the season beyond, you almost are going to have guys that are very good players fighting for spots. Yeah. And that's in reality what's happening right now with Missouri State. Mm -hmm. You have uh, 25 players fighting for those 22 positions, and each game there's three out. Mm -hmm. and. The one thing that Missouri State has had this season, and, and I guess I, in, a, in a good way I'm singling out this guy, but Chris Mosley. Chris has sat, he comes back in, he produces with a goal yeah. or an assist or does something to make things happen. And that's just what this team does because they know that they have to fight for position day in and day out. And I would guess that that creates a lot of friendly rivalry amongst the guys. And, you know, you hear that uh, on different sports teams and things like that all the time. But it, it would seem to elevate the play of everybody on the team. It does, uh, and I think also our new head coach and Bob Booker, who's uh, come aboard this season, uh, he instills just an unbelievable presence. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, he finish your checks, uh, right. make your passes, uh, intensity, integrity. I mean, everything that you can think of, any uh, synonym that you can put together yeah. or adjective, that is what he expects, and. You look down the line at some of the teams. Uh, in this league, I've covered teams like Davenport, who's mm -hmm. won the national championship right, three yeah. times, moved up to Division One. And the common theme between these players was every pass we make, every check we make, every uh, thing we think on the ice is because our goal is nationals. That's where mm -hmm. we want to be. Yeah. And this is a team this year, Missouri State, that has that attitude. Mm -hmm. And it's just so it's just so interesting because there have been great teams on Missouri State 
but I don't believe with the attitude that this team has had this year, and it can go for any team. I, I think NIU has that attitude. I yeah, mean, I would agree. You know, you, you look at this team and, and just flying off the radar, and boom, next thing you know, they go from 12 on up to the seventh spot, which is a big jump in two ranking periods. Absolutely it is, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm, we're excited about NIU here. I'm sure people are excited about uh, Missouri State, where you guys are. I want to get back to something you talked about with Jack Ryan and his ability to score shorthanded and the team in general. Do you think that that contributes to their, their attitude of, you know, we talked to the coaches at, from NIU this week, um, and they said these Missouri State's a team that just go, go, go. They're just looking to score constantly. Um, does that enable them to not worry if they take a penalty? You know, we talk at NIU all the time about don't take bad penalties. You can't get shorthanded. You know, they mention hard work and discipline all the time. Our listeners are probably real sick of me talking about hard work and discipline, but it's true. Is that not saying that Missouri State's undisciplined, but I would guess the attitude towards being aggressive and maybe being aggressive to the point that you take maybe a few more penalties, it isn't such a big deal because you know you can score offensively. I think to answer that is just to follow up with my previous point is I don't know if they necessarily think, oh, we can score so it's okay or Jack Ryan can be our savior or anything sure. like that. But I think they still have the mentality of everything that we do has a purpose. Mm. And if we're taking a penalty, and yeah, it might be a bad penalty, okay, then our next purpose is to not allow the other team to score. Right. If we have an option to go ahead and, and score shorthanded, then yeah, we're going to take that option. But I, I think that everything that's done is for that ultimate goal. And I know it sounds like a very simple answer, but I think with a lot of teams, when you have that specific goal in mind, you can adjust. You can yeah. adjust to a penalty, you can adjust to a situation. And again, the strange thing with Missouri State is shorthanded, they love, and I'm paraphrasing here, they love a shorthanded situation. And the only reason I can say that is you have to look at it statistically. Right, yeah. 20 shorthanded goals. But I will tell you right now, with the nine shorthanded goals that Jack Ryan has, a lot of that is because of his stride. Oh. He takes two steps, two strides, and he is already from the red line to the blue line or any other line in between. That is how fast and how quick this player is. Plus, you have a supporting cast. You know, you have a lot of guys that, I don't want to say it's their role, but they understand that, okay, if i got to get in the corner and check, that's what I'm going to do. If I have to, uh, you know, if I have to be a, a wingman on an, an, an unintentional pass, I'm going to do that. If I have to get in front of the goalie, screen the goalie, I have to do that. And, you know, you look at a lot of guys, uh, one guy who scratched tonight, Matt Townsend. Well, Matt Townsend and Adam Otten played together. Mm. That feeds into the recruitment of Missouri State. You, yeah. have, you have players now coming. They played with other players before, especially in the St. Louis area, CBC. They see how successful the program is, and they come over. And I'm sure that's what happens with NIU, too. Absolutely. Because you have a couple of players that have come from ACHA D1 that I'm sure have looked at this team and said, this is a team I want to play for. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And one of the guys, uh, Anthony Contilla, who came from a D1 school, has, adds, adds an element of speed that they haven't had in the past, so that's really exciting. We're talking with Steve Kasson, the broadcaster for Missouri State. And one more thing is they've turned on the music for us here. So um, one more thing for you. I want to talk about your goaltending duo, Justin Davis and Steve Lombardo. Each of these guys, uh, you know, I, I, my records say one is eight and three, one's eight and two. I hope that's up to date. Um, but Davis giving up less than two goals a game, Lombardo 2.28. Um, how in the world do you make a decision which guy to go with? Actually, uh, well, when well, I how say, does the coach do I it, I should say. Coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't. Okay. They decide on their own. He says before the start of game number one, who's going? A lot of the time it's a coin flip. Really? That is, you know, to get back to your other point, Missouri State right now, this team is, is such comrades. They have such camaraderie. They are such a fun team. Everybody loves everybody. But between Lombardo and Davis, they basically flip a coin, and that's who starts, and the next one plays the next game, unless there's maybe an injury or some situation like that. But that's been positive for Missouri State. There have not been much injuries. The injury bug stayed away. But Justin Davis, actually, to update him, he is 9-3 with a 1.83 okay. goals against average. Goodness gracious. He has three and a half shutouts. He shared a shutout last game. It was the 14 or nothing shutout against Eastern Illinois. He shared it with Sam Jones. Sam Jones is a Springfield product out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he played.
played the last, uh, almost a little less than half the game, okay. came in and just played phenomenal. So theoretically, he has a 100% save percentage right. and no goals against, <laughs> but he does share a shutout. So, you know, and Justin Davis came from the Odessa Jackalopes. So okay. you look at some of the experience that these teams have, and what we meant, I mentioned earlier is, yeah, you have college players, but theoretically you play in the minors, you play in the NH NHL, you actually have a little bit more experience coming into the college ranks, and it definitely helps with recruitment, and it helps with the team. Absolutely. Well, Steve Casson, thanks so much for your time. It's been great to talk to you. Um, we wish you and your team the best of luck, maybe a little more luck after this weekend, but thanks so much for, uh, for coming up, and uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road again. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, good luck in the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. That's Steve Casson, the broadcaster for Missouri State University. And we uh, send a big thank you to Steve, the broadcaster. And uh, if you want to check out a really well-done sports online yeah. radio station, check out Web Sports Radio. That's Steve's radio station. They cover Missouri State. Uh, they cover some high school games down in the Springfield, Missouri area. They cover the indoor football team down there. Um, <clears throat> I think they cover a baseball team, too. I can't remember yep. when I was looking at it what the name of that team is. But uh, at any rate, uh, a real quality guy, a couple of really nice guys. Stan, his color man over there, he and I talked for about 10 minutes earlier tonight. And uh, just some really nice guys. And, uh, you know, we wish them the best of luck after this weekend, of course. Of, of course. <laughs> we wish any fellow broadcaster the best. That's the first time we've had two broadcast teams at the same time. Yeah, place. absolutely. So we've been able to avoid the rumble so far. So <laughs> I think that that's a good thing. It's because we got Dan here. He's <laughs> like right. the ref. Yeah, that's right. Dan's, yeah. Look, he's got that sweater on tonight. He's oh, looking man. all buff. I, I tell like, you what. Like, tell you what. That's, we're talking about Dan Sanchez. He's our cameraman. All the great camera shots you get. Dan's bringing to you tonight, so we thank him a lot for that. We are in, almost done with the second intermission as the Huskies are out of their locker room, and here come the Ice Bears. It's 3-2. to two. Let's recap the scoring for you. Uh, the Ice Bears got on the board first. Jack Ryan scored at 9.53 to go in the first, and it was one nothing. But at 18.39, <clears throat> just less than two minutes into the second period, Rob Bach from Justin Rosinski on the power play. It was 1-1. One to one. And about a minute and a half later, Mike Hansen scored from Joe Boris again on the power play. And the Huskies took a 2-1 to one lead. Stayed that way until there was 11.24 to go in the second when Blake Ryan, set, set up by his brother, scored, and it was 2-2. Two, two. And then with 8.25 to go in the second, Mike Hansen scored his second goal of the game, and it was 3-2, to two, and that's where we sit. We did get word over the break that uh, the reason that Anthony Contillo is out is that the referees gave him a 10-minute misconduct and the word that we got was that he had used his, quote, advanced SAT language. <laughs> so we'll let you all you guys figure out. Take that how you want it. Yeah, all you guys figure out what that means. But we got that from his dad, Ron. I'm assuming that's his dad. Maybe it's his. Oh, yeah, it's, I know it's his dad. His dad, Ron Contillo, who contacted me. So, uh, Ron, I, you must be out there listening. We appreciate that. Uh, thanks for helping us. We need all the help yeah. we can get. So thanks a lot to Ron for that. But um, So Contillo will be out for a while. As we start the second period, as both teams are on the ice here, when the Huskies are 20 minutes away from uh, a really great victory, they've played really well tonight. They've frustrated Missouri State. Yep. And, uh, boy, 20 minutes from now, if they're celebrating a victory, it'd be quite a night. If they do that, then they have to remember, we always talk about the Saturday curse. Yeah, yeah, except for at Michigan, it was flipped. Uh -huh. It was Friday, and then they played better on Saturday. So hopefully... They'll play better tomorrow, and, and you know, you're going to have to, um, regardless of what happens tonight, they've played Missouri State basically even, yeah. and Missouri State's going to come out this period and tomorrow, the whole rest of the time, uh, that they're on the ice together, and they're going to come firing. The Huskies are going to have to withstand it. They have so far, and uh, here we go. Final 20 minutes. It's Nick Remley to the faceoff circle with John Lucas. Remley wins the faceoff to Brian Pickett. Scott Swartz, Marcus Grosnick along with you, Dan Sanchez, our cameraman. As we're going to get an icing call, it'll be a neutral zone face-off. Not an icing call, excuse me, an offsides call. So it's a neutral zone face-off. As we've got 1952 to go, sec third period, excuse me, 3-2 Huskies. Since the Ice Bears are down 3-2, look for them to come really hard here in the first couple minutes, especially with Cantillo still serving that, actually, Ferdo serving the power penalty. Yeah, serving the, serving the two-minute penalty. Yep. Cantillo will be in there a little bit longer. So here's Pickett, deep. Behind his own net, fires it up, and out all the way. 30 seconds to go on the power play for the Ice Bears. And the ice looks a lot better right now. Gave him that few extra minutes to let it yeah, if you uh, were with us dry at, up. Yeah, good point by you, Marcus. If you were with us at the beginning of the second period, the ice was still very wet starting that period, and several pucks just came to a dead stop 
in a puddle of water. And that has been avoided so far. Here's in front, Hare kicks it aside as Lucas was charging to the net. And now Greenberg gets it up to Remley. Tried to hit Remley, but it was hit into the zone by Aldag. Frodima, Frodima, excuse me, out of the net, out of the penalty box. Both teams at full and even strength. Pickett's attempt all the way down goes behind the Ice Bears net where Davis out to play it up to Jack Ryan. Ryan cross rink pass to his brother who taps it to Kirksey. Ridden into the boards by Hansen. Now it's line. Line clears the puck to the neutral zone where Aldag's going to have to change it up. Hansen lost his stick for a minute and then picks it back up. Nice stick there by Joe Boris as he knocked the puck away from Blake Ryan. Ryan in front now has a turnover shot. Kicked wide by Alex Hare. Left pad, got it down and kicked it wide. Here's Jack Ryan, a good stick by Billy Line. Gets it out, Hansen down to the ice as he clears the puck to neutral zone. It's fired back in by the Ice Bears. Hare out of his net to play it to pick it. Now here's the Ryan brothers back deep. They're battling with Boris and Pickett, and it's Nick Leon, cross rink pass, tries to hit Serpico, and Serpico couldn't get it quite settled down as now Blake Ryan took it away. Here's Armstrong with it. Armstrong fires ahead to Draper. Draper leaves it, thought his man Otten was there, but it was actually Boris. So for the Huskies, it's Joe Boris holding here. Huskies again moving left to right on your computer screen. There in their white uniforms, Missouri State in the maroon. Just under two minutes into the third period. We're going to get a whistle. An elbowing penalty is going to be against number nine, Chris Mosley. And he, he is not, not happy. happy. And he shouldn't be. I didn't even really see an elbow or anything come up. No one was down on the ground. But nonetheless, the Huskies get to go on the connection power play for, I think, the fifth time. Let's no, see. More. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh seven. time. And they are uh, two for seven. So, boy, a goal here would be huge for the Huskies. But, again, we've talked about the ability of the Ice Bears to score shorthanded. You can't get sloppy if the Ice Bears possess. They're going to look to score, and they do. But Guthrie just fires it down to Alex Hare, who comes out of his net to play it. And he's going to leave it behind the net for Pickett. Pickett then leaves it for Hickey. Hickey, Pickett, Leon, Bach, and Remley on the ice. Different line combination there without Greenberg on that first yeah, Greenberg line. Greenberg or Hansen. Yeah. Aldag in the corner battling with Leon. Bach picks it up. Tried to get it to Leon, but it's cleared out by Aldag. Hickey yeah. going to go down and pick it up. No, Hare's going to come out of the net and play it. Yeah, Huskies getting it in quick, but the Icebergs are just getting it out even quicker than the Huskies can set anything up. But I think up. it's telling that they've just cleared it. They're not coming out looking for offense like we've heard that they do. And I yeah, oh yeah, for the Ice Bears. Yeah, they haven't yeah. really pressured anything or trying to make it. Now they might. Now Here are the do. brothers. Here's the Ryan brothers. This is Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan. Yeah, Jack Ryan. Ah. And he's taken down by Hickey, and that's going to be a penalty on Hickey. Hickey then stands over Jack Ryan. Hickey's got to walk away here. Yep. As he can't get anything compounded, he's going to go off to the penalty box as it is. And he's not happy about something that happened on the other end of the ice as he points down to that end <laughs> of the ice. And Jack Ryan, Hickey's going to come off. So I believe that's a tripping penalty on yep. Troy Hickey. Or a hooking. Hooking penalty. So that's what it. I meant. That's what, that's what yeah. I meant to say. That's, that's why I'm here. I'll I appreciate that. I'm writing stuff down. <laughs> I'm taking my best guess. So Hickey's in the penalty box. So about a so, minute and two seconds of four on four. And then it'll be 58 seconds of power play, excuse me, for the Ice Bears. So this, this has the potential to be a turning point in this game. Yep. Huskies have got to play smart here, look to score, but not, not try to get too cute with it. If you get a shot, get it. If you need to clear it, clear it. Here's a shot from Barch. And the near side half boards, Hare gets it in the glove and holds on. 16-28 to go, 3-2 to two Huskies. 147 to go on the penalty to Hickey. 40 seconds to go on the penalty to Mosley. And to piggyback so, on your idea, Scott, sorry. No, that's fine, go ahead. The one thing you want to do if you're Huskies, if you can get a shot, you said take it. If not, clear it all the way down, take the icing, and set things back up. Absolutely, yes. There's no problem with that. Here's a breakout pass from Hansen to Rosinski, who thought that he had a player coming up the side. Maybe Rosinski forgot that there were only four men on the ice. That pass is taken away by Rosinski. Boy, Justin Rosinski yeah. in his first action, really, of the season for the Huskies, playing well. Great Draper now loses it. Yeah, loses it from line, 
Line now to Hansen. Hansen on the far side across to Rosinski. Rosinski in one on one. Dipsy doo, little move there by Justin Rosinski, and it's held in by Ryan McSweeney. A shot in front. Oh, and the redirect just misses from Rosinski. Boy, that kid is in the right place at the right time tonight. And here is Blake Ryan in all alone. He's got two Husky defensemen. McSweeney there. Leaves it now for, for uh, that's number 19, Sadorf. And now we're going to get another penalty called as the Husky, excuse me, the Ice Bear penalty is over. And Mosley's out of the box. So Remley's going to come off. Hook. A hooking penalty on Remley. Not a good penalty to take there. Now you got uh, five on three for a good 57, a good minute. Yeah, 57 seconds of five on three. And this is dangerous. Talk about a turning point. Yes, this is this, this is. is the this is the biggest moment of the game. Huskies have to kill off this five on three. It's Pickett, and it's McSweeney, and a good job to clear that all the way down by Pickett. It's Pickett, McSweeney, and Boris. Here come the Ice Bears. It's Buckheit. He's got it up the ice. Enters the zone. Holds there in the right wing corner, behind the Husky net. Now to Jack Ryan. And that is Otten, back to Ryan. Ryan to Otten, play a little give and go behind the net. Back to Jack Ryan, out in front, here's Buckhead, a shot, and it goes wide. And this is gonna be Barch over on the right point, holding it in, 20 seconds on the five on three. Here's a shot, Hare, out of his wow. net! And it gets the glove on it and covers it up, a great save by Alex Hare, as that was a shot from Justin Buckheit, and he had nobody between him and Hare. Hare Got the glove up, got it, glove on it, dropped it to the ice and covered it. 15, 14.56 to go in the third period. 3-2 Huskies, 15 seconds in the five on three. That's the farthest out I've seen Alex here come out and challenge somebody. He was into the left faceoff yeah. circle. I've, I've but took away the that. angle. Great yep. play by Hare. Here's Sadorf in the right circle. A shot, and it goes wide of Hare's net. That shot was by Guthrie. Five seconds on the five on three. Here's Kirksey. To Draper, back to Kirksey, down deep. Now it's out. This is Guthrie. Hickey's out of the box. They kill up the five on three. A shot wide. One minute of power play to go. And here's Hickey up the ice. And he's just going to fire it down. Oh, he's got to fire that harder and get it down deep. I think he was actually looking for Greenberg there. But, yeah, I agree. you got to get that thing deep. Yeah, and you make can't look change. for offense here. You've got to get it deep and change. Here's a shot in front, and that never gets through. No stick, stick is loose Hare. on the ice. And Alex Hare without his blocker, without his stick, excuse me, Here's a shot, and it is in the goal. Missouri State with the goal, and I believe that was Kirksey. Yep. Who scores the goal, and we are tied. Just a good shot there. Yeah. Alex Hare had, it looked like Brian Pickett's stick there for a little bit. So much traffic out in front, and here got blocked. Goals in, 3-3, and like we said, this is the turning point. Now you got to see the resiliency of the Huskies to see if they can't come back and... Uh, counter so another power play goal boy you've got to keep wow. off the power play against these guys I think that every goal is a power play goal for them it is every goal is a power play goal for them tonight and so if you want to know why discipline's yeah. important there you go and it's the opposite usually it's the penalty kill that works really well for the Huskies tonight yep. it's the power play absolutely back to live action and 14 minutes to go in the game boy there's almost a turnover Ooh. by line and now there is a turnover Kirksey gets a shot and it's covered up by Alex Hare Hare frustrated flicks the puck away yeah, bad giveaway there by Billy Lyon. Hare was out of his net. The Ice Bears were circling there. Good thing that the uh, defense has been so good tonight to clear that puck. Yeah, absolutely. 13.56 to go third period. New, new game here, tied at three. Rosinski to the faceoff circle against Otten. Otten's going to get thrown out of the faceoff circle. He'll be replaced it by Andy Draper. You know, for all of Draper's points... We have not said his name much tonight. It's a good nope. job by Serpico to get that puck out of there. And again, he's playing McInnes there. Plays the body, pushes him off the puck. Here's McSweeney to Hickey. Hickey across to Serpico, who just flips it down into the Ice Bears zone. Brett Wheeler on the ice, but we're happy to see him after he took a hit over here on the near side. Serpico tries to throw that in front. Here's Wheeler. Wheeler in front, tried to find Rosinski, and he couldn't as it was taken away by Guthrie. Guthrie up the ice to the far side corner. McSweeney in there, and Otten. McSweeney comes away with it. And it's up to Serpico to center ice. Serpico to Rosinski, a three on two for the Huskies. Rosinski, oh, he tried to fake out his man Armstrong, but Armstrong got his stick in there and took the puck away. 
This is Ruzinski down deep. Tim McSweeney from the point, a shot redirected, and it never gets through. Another shot. That one doesn't get through. Here's Ruzinski. Ruzinski can stick handle. Held in by McSweeney. Dumps it deep, and we're going to get a couple of Huskies changed. Joe Serpico over on the near side, and he gets boarded yep. by number six, Draper. Draper is going to go to the box. That's got to be, yep, that's a boarding penalty. Good call hey, by I got that one yeah, right. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. The, the easy, the hard ones we get sometimes. Easy ones we miss. Well, I, I would say I'm not sure I get many of them, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so Draper, one of their best players, one of their top scorers off the ice. Boy, now the connection power play yeah. for the next two minutes. This would be huge to get it back. How crucial. Huskies have been good on the power play tonight. Boris can't keep the face off in, and it's going to go down deep behind Hal Alex Hare's net. I don't know what the ice. Uh, yeah, the clock hadn't yeah. started, so we'll see what happens. So the Huskies <laughs> might actually get a few more seconds of power play time as Pickett enters the zone. Connection power play, mycnxn.com for sports apparel and opportunities to connect with athletes in your area. Here's a centering pass. Oh, nobody home. Boris was the intended target of that centering pass. From Greenberg, Pickett yep. leaves it for Hickey. That's one of the best defensive pairings tonight is Hickey and uh, Pickett. Yep. Well, they've been as good as Line and McSweeney. Yep. The four of those guys have played just tremendous hockey tonight. Here's Pickett. Good for Pickett at his, at his advanced age. <laughs> That's what we like to see. Uh, those of you who don't know uh, the team, uh, Pickett is 24 years old. He's the oldest guy on the team, and they all call him Grandpa. So that's the inside joke about Pickett. As we've got 104 to go on the power play, and the Huskies having difficulty setting anything up here in this power play. Here's Justin Rosinski. Rosinski knocked off the puck but leaves it for Boris. Boris now to the center, enters the zone. Leaves it there for Greenberg. Greenberg across, tried to hit Hansen, but instead he hit Lucas. Yeah, if you're Greenberg, I'd rather see you wrap that around the net and try to set something up that way to yeah. go cross ice. Oh, and now Hansen! And Lucas getting into a little bit. Hansen took exception to Lucas's hit and came up and gave him a shove. Referees allow them to play on. Greenberg now into the right wing corner. Here he comes back behind the net. Holding, holding at the far side half board. So Leon in front, Nick Leon got it in, in deep. And Davis down to save it. I don't think Leon could quite get that to his yep. forehand and flip it up. Davis was down, but it was unable to get it flipped up to that to, to elevate it at any rate. 11.07 to go, 20 seconds on the connection power play, tied at three. You see how well we talk about how good Leon's hands are. And right there you saw he's in deep or in tight on Davis and was still be able to get a shot off. That's a really good call by you. you he really displayed his the good hands right there. Yep. Draper in the penalty box for 20 more seconds on the connection power play. Remley came over and talked to an official. Now the official going over and saying a couple of words to the bench of Missouri State. Clock's still running. Oh, I think they ran the extra time off. Oh, okay. Remember at the beginning of the, of the power play, the clock didn't start, so I would assume they ran that time off. So there are 11 seconds on the connection power play. Billy Lyon has it taken away from him by Jack Ryan. Ryan just clears it all the way down, and that is going to end the power play. Not a great power play for the Huskies nope. there. I don't know that they got – oh, no, Leon had the one shot on goal, but that was it. Boy, look at Jack Ryan. He is a player coming in and putting a lot of pressure here. Here's Bach now, misses the stick of Leon. They had a good offensive chance going there. And here's Ryan in. Hickey doing a good job shielding him out, and Ryan takes him down and gets a shot, and it sits off the back of the net. Hickey gets up wondering where's the penalty. I don't know that that, that, that deserves a penalty. It looked like they were both going for the puck. Ryan did a nice job. What do you think? I think Ryan was just trying to get around Hickey, and Hickey lost an edge and went down. It just made it look a lot worse than it was. Yeah, and, you know, at 10 minutes to go, you're tied at three. It's a tightly, you know, number six and seven teams in the ACHA Central Region. It, it, everybody's emotions are running yep. high. And there's Pickett high off the boards. And Justin Rosinski comes out with it. Rosinski's got Serpico on his left. It's a two-on-one. Tried to hit Serpico. Oh, and a nice defensive play by an ice bear. I believe that was Sarah who got down in the way of that. Here's Draper. Draper tries to pass it off there and cannot. Tried to pass it to his man, Otten. And now the Huskies control Rosinski. Boy, Rosinski can stick handle. Here he comes. Gets it over to Serpico. Joe Serpico gets it into the zone, but then loses the handle. Acero comes out, and it's a cross pass to Draper. Draper out. He's got McSweeney on him. McSweeney does a good job making him turn. Otten can't get the puck as it's taken away by McSweeney. I'm sorry, that's taken away by Buds. Sean Buds up around 
to Serpico. Serpico flips it up to center ice, and it's tapped back in, but then they cannot keep it in. Here's Buds. Buds with a shot kicked wide by Davis. Not a great shot. Just put it on net. Nobody else with him. Nothing wrong with that. Buds battles in the corner with Cornier. Buds kicks it out of there, and he delivers a good shot to Bark to, excuse me, Buckheit. Here's a shot from the point by McSweeney. It never gets through as that hit the skate of Sadorf or the leg of Sadorf. And now it's dumped into the Husky zone. We are under, we are just approaching nine minutes to go. Third period, we've played half the period. The only goal is now that Huskies, uh, Buckheit and Buds get tied up. Here's a shot, kick side by Hare. And they battle back behind Hare's net. Corny, here's another shot. Hare cover, gets it, blocks it away, kicks it to the corner. Under nine minutes to go, we're tied at three. Huskies, Billy Line with it, off the boards, not out, as it's held in there by McInnes. McInnes, a shot, Hare with a glove save, and a beauty! 8.48 to go in the third period, tied at three. Ice Bears are coming strong. The Huskies need to make better passes and better decisions with the puck. Couple they, of bad turnovers. Couple bad turnovers, and Greenberg trying to make too much out of really nothing going on. Yeah. Should've just rinked it around and set something up instead of going cross ice. Well, and that's why I like to play by Buds here at the point to just fire it on net. Yep. Nobody else is with you. Don't try to get too cute with it. Huskies win the face off and clear it out of the zone. And here's Mike Hansen. He's got Boris. It's a two on one. Hansen and Boris in front. Oh, he just missed it. Oh, Boris was there. The pass was there. But a great defensive play by Ryan Armstrong of the Ice Bears to break that up or the Huskies would have the lead as it is. We've got 8.36 to go in the third. 3-3. That was a wide open net for Joe Boris. Absolutely. Great setup by Hanson is drawing the defenseman. Boy, how about those two guys playing together all season? Yeah. You can tell that they are comfortable with each other. Again, you talk about that first line, but the second line is just as effective. Well, and you're starting to see three and four lines be effective yep. now. Here's Hickey. Hickey to Boris. Boris in, rinks it down. Davis out of his net. Leon back there does a good job of evading Davis, but gets it to Boris. Boris now turns and leaves it for Leon. But you know, Leon on that line with Hanson and Boris looks like he's been there all year. He's yeah. Leon there in the far left wing corner, knocked off the puck by Sadorf. And now it's to Boris. Yeah, Here's the, Leon back behind. Go ahead, Marcus, what were you gonna say? I was say, you got that line, Leon with the hands, Hanson with the height, and Boris Picking a the shot, middle. excuse me, never gets through his all day. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's a good way to say it, boy, and that's a nice combination to have on that line. Pickett and Boris giving a little play. Here's a shot, and Davis kicks that wide. Leon with it. Leon evades the check. He's now put into the boards by Kirksey, and the puck attempted to clear. The Ice Bears cannot clear it. Huskies, boy, this line with a great shift. Boris around. Boris holds there at the half boards. Down deep for Leon. He turns it over, but Hickey's going to go get it at the half boards. Troy Hickey, and now Kirksey has it. And a good stick by Hickey. Can't keep it in, and a great job by Pickett to deny Jack Ryan that opportunity. Now Ryan in on Pickett. Oh, and he fakes him, but a save by Hare. Nick Leon doing a good job back there, not letting him set it up. Boy, Leon and Pickett, a good job defensively, and then a great save by Hare. Keep it 3-3 with seven away to go in the third. Yeah, Jack Ryan got an opportunity for a breakaway, but I believe it was Leon to break it up at center ice, and he gets back in the zone and Pickett stands them up to deny the second opportunity on the breakaway. Good job, and, and a nice nice job because um, uh, Ryan was able to fake out Pickett, but yep. Leon was there and knocked the, the puck away so that uh, there wasn't a, as much on that shot as there could have been as the Huskies win the faceoff. Line over in the corner, now gets it to Remley. Remley, oh, <laughs> Remley turned around and tried to pass it, almost put in his own net. Man, Alex Harris has got enough trying to face these shots from Missouri State. He doesn't need them from his teammates. Now they battle for it. That's Remley and McInnes behind the Ice Bear net. It's rinked out over to Mosley. And line winds up and fires that into the Ice Bear zone. Davis can't control it, so Mosley on the far side half boards just flips it to center ice. And it's over McSweeney's stick, so line's going to go back and get it. Six and a half minutes to go. Third period, we're tied at three. Up around to Bach now for the Huskies. Bach turns and leaves it there for Remley. Remley to center ice, tries to go across, and Greenberg just catches it in his body. <laughs> Fires it down and then skates off. Remley here on the near side of half boards. Leaves it for Contillo. Good to see Contillo back out there. The Huskies have missed him. Good fake by Hickey. Hickey now on the near side of half boards to the corner. Turns around. He's getting battling there with Buckheit. 
Buckhead and Remley in the corner battle. Contillo joins the fray. Now it's out. Wheeler in front couldn't get a hold of it. And it's taken away by Wheeler, who rinks it back down to the far side half boards for Rosinski. Rosinski checked there by Barch. Barch gets it out. And here comes Buckheit. He's taking down into the corner. R Hickey is there. Hickey with a good stick knocks it away. Wheeler battling, gets it to center ice. Five and a half minutes to go. Third period, tied at three. Seems to me like the two teams, Marcus, as we approach five minutes to go, are content to just fire it into the zone, play dump and chase. You don't see him carrying it into the zone. As yeah. that puck got out, we got an offsides call. 5.19 to go, third period, 3-3. Go ahead. Yeah, they, they really are. They're content, like you said, with just Seem Seems like they've scaled it, it back. Yeah. And it's kind of surprising with the Ice Bears how offensively minded they are that they would consider doing that. Well, that's the clearest sign yet that they're playing Husky hockey. Yeah. Clearest you, sign yeah. yet that they're playing NIU style. As we got a timeout on the ice. 5.19 to go. Marcus, 5.19 to go. If you're the Huskies, I mean, you first of all, you got to feel good about where you are. Yep. You're tied at three. You've only given up three goals to this team that put up 18 on a team, Kansas, earlier this year. Um, so you got to feel good about that. But you also got to feel like that last power play goal, you know, it wasn't a great penalty, and you took several penalties in a row. Uh, maybe you maybe you let them back into it by taking that penalty. Yeah, you definitely do. And right now I'm not sure if who has the momentum. But like you said, both teams are just kind of content with chipping and chasing. No one's really making any big advances so far in this later it, half of the period. It doesn't seem to me like uh, you said. It's hard to tell who has the yeah. moment because they're just dumping and chasing. Um, I thought that the Huskies had momentum when that line of Boris and Hanson and Leon were down there because yep. they had a lot, of, about a minute of yeah, pressure in that and zone. Half. And then they had the momentum. But now the Ice Bears have put a couple of shots on net. Boris wins that face off and kicks it to Hanson. Hanson looking for the hat trick. Here he comes for the slot, and it's kicked wide by Davis. But a good goal-scoring opportunity for Mike Hansen. Hansen, Leon, and Boris. That line's out there again with the defenseman of McSweeney in line. Here's Boris. Comes out of the out of the corner. Tried to take it in. And the net comes off its moorings, I believe. Yes, it yep. does. So we get a whistle-stopping play. Five minutes even. 3-3. Three, three, we're tied. Yeah, that's, this line has been one of their better lines. The first line hasn't produced besides, I believe, box goal. Yeah. Uh, but this and line, that's not to say they've played poorly. They no. just haven't scored. Yeah, this line has been really good with Hanson's two goals and then the other two forwards and Leon and Boris uh, doing the little things right on the boards. So the faceoff circle, Boris wins it to Leon. Leon battling in the corner with Aldag, the captain for Missouri State. Leon throws it in front, tried to hit Boris, but he missed everybody except for an ice bears. McSweeney then holds it in at the... Near side, half boards, down to Hanson. Hanson throws it in front. Oh, and he was going for the bad angle redirect off the body of the goalie Davis and just about had it happen. Boris now in the faceoff circle, turns. Turns, using his body to shield that uh, his man off the puck. That's Blake Ryan. Here's Hanson. Hanson to McSweeney at the right point. McSweeney flips it up off the skates of Ryan, and here's Nick Leon holding. Again, here's this... Here's this line possessing yep. the puck in the zone. We're at 4.22 to go. McSweeney holds it in again to Boris. Look at them. This is tremendous. McSweeney and Jack Ryan having some words at the blue line. Here's a shot from Billy Lyon, and it's loose in front. Hanson tries to swat at it. Boris came in. Nobody could get it, and Lyon takes it away. We approach four minutes to go. A shot from the point by line, Blocked away nicely. Kick save by Davis. And now here come the Ice Bears. It's Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan puts a move on. And it's McSweeney between Ryan and a goal. McSweeney with a good stick there. Now to, to uh, Kirksey. Kirksey trying to get it to Otten. Otten got, his, got held up by Leon there. And Leon and the Huskies clear it out. Remley down. Takes a vicious hit from, uh, that's McInnes. And now Bach has it. So now the top line on the ice. Bach, Remley, and Greenberg. Here's Remley, and we are going to get a penalty. Whoa, a stick goes flying over by the official. Remley and McGinnis having some words. This is this is as feisty as we've yeah. seen Remley all year. As Bach is going to go off the ice Two minutes because he's gotten a slash. Well, here's your game right here, Marcus. Yep. 3.32 to go. Two minutes, a slash to Rob Bach. So the strength of the team all year has been the penalty kill. They're going to have to be good for the next two minutes. Yeah, you got to just, whenever you get a chance, fire it down, help out your goaltender, clear those rebounds. And like you said, this is the game right here. If you can kill it off, you got a minute 32 to try to do something. If not, you get you take that point and you go into OT. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. There's no shame in taking that point point, going to OT. You never know what can happen then. 
Ice Bears control off the faceoff. Guthrie there leaves it down low for Draper. Interesting that the Ryan brothers are not on the ice for the Ice Bears. I would guess before these two minutes are up, they will be as that puck is cleared out by Remley. Nice job getting a stick there. 1.43 to go on the power play for the Ice Bears. Here comes Barch. Barch into the zone. Good stick by Hickey, and it's cleared out by Greenberg. Good sticks there all around. That's been the theme of the night. Even with the forwards that have been using their sticks very well, getting active in the lane. No question. And now we get a whistle. Offsides. Offsides, penalty against the Ice Bears, 125 on the penalty, 2.57 to go in the third, tied at three. And just what you wanted to see, Greenberg got it on his stick at about the far side half boards, didn't try to get too cute with it, just cleared it down. That's what they've got to do because the, all that time that it takes Missouri State to chase yep. and bring it up, that's killing time. you got to make them go the full length of the ice. Absolutely. Face-off win to Hanson who fires it down just like we want to see. Behind the net of Davis. And, you know, you almost get the feeling like the Ice Bears are content to take the point yeah. here. You don't see, again, now the Ryan brothers are on the ice, but they didn't start out. That's interesting to me. And it's cleared out nicely by the Huskies, and the Ice Bears will have to touch up. Here's Jack Ryan. This is a guy you got to worry about. Puts a shot down off the boards, and Hare rinks it around on the far side to Blake Ryan. Blake Ryan to all that get the point. Over here. This is Sadorf. A shot here in front. Ryan with a shot. Oh, he was in the slot. A great goal scoring area. And the puck unable to be cleared. 47 seconds. Aldag. Aldag to Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan, a shot up. Save. Glove saved by Alex Hare. That one Ooh. popped up. I don't think it was going to go in the goal. But things were a little helter skelter for the Huskies there. He got up, gloved it, got the whistle, gets the stoppage of play. 2.13 to go in the third. 42 seconds on the Missouri State power play. And we are tied at three. I believe that. That puck actually deflected up off a Hanson stick. Mm. Ryan was looking probably for his brother down, down low, and Hanson got a stick on it. Yeah, they're like the Sedins. It. Yeah, it's you got to watch out for the brothers. Sense. I hope they're nicer guys than the Sedins. I'm <laughs> sure they are. So that one's popped up. Face-off win to the Ice Bears, and now here's Rosinski, and he's going to flip it up off and into neutral ice. 30 seconds to go on the power play. Two minutes in the third. Here's Draper. Draper nicely. Checked by Hickey. It's deep. Here's Barch. Barch cross rink over there to Guthrie. Guthrie here to McInnes. McInnes at the high slot. Down low. This is Barch. Barch holds there. Gets it. Bad angle shot. Nice job there in front by Hickey. And it's taken out by Wheeler. And we've got three seconds, two and one on the power play. Rob Bach out of the box. Penalty killed. 90 seconds to go. Third period. Bach intercepts that pass, takes it. Here he comes, F goes into the Missouri State ice. Bach with it. Bach in front, wrap around a shot. It's loose in front, still jabbing at it. And the referee lost sight of it. And Aldag delivers a shot after the whistle to Wheeler, but I don't think that was dirty. Looked like maybe he was just playing to that whistle yeah. and co couldn't stop his momentum. He could have hit him a lot harder. Wheeler comes up, they kind of tap each other as if to say, hey man, it's all good. <laughs> No harm, no foul. Good job by Bach, though, coming out of that net, going hard behind the net to take the puck away from Davis to set something up. 75 seconds to go in the third period. 115. And we're tied at three. Remley to the faceoff circle against Blake Ryan. Ryan wins the faceoff. Line holds it in at the blue line. Here's Aldag up off the boards to Billy Line. Billy Line then fires it to the far side corner. And the Ice Bears control. Here's Jack Ryan. One minute to go in the third period. McSweeney does a good job of getting a stick there and hitting it out to center ice. Jack Ryan on the far side, half boards. Ryan battling over there. He's got it, but it's taken away now. Here's Greenberg. Greenberg and Bach. Greenberg in. Oh, a nice job defensively to take him off the puck by number four, Guthrie. 35 seconds to go, third period. Billy Line chases it down, an icing call. Offensive zone draw for the Huskies here yep. as we get 33 seconds to go. And a key for that icing is you notice the Huskies changing. Missouri State cannot change on that icing call. So they've got to leave everybody out there. You know, and at this point, they had a eight hour bus ride today. Yeah. You know, they you never know. I'm, hey, I'm looking for anything here. And they got Boris out there. Leon you got the line of Boris, Le Leon, and Hansen with Pickett and Hickey, the defenseman. Face-off win to the Ice Bears. 30 seconds, third period. Ice Bears trying to clear it. This is Kirksey up 
Kirksey gets it to Draper, but a good stick by Troy Hickey to take it away as we have 20 seconds to go. Nick Leon with it. Leon tried to hit Hanson, couldn't. 15 seconds to go, third period. And we have, what is this, an offsides call? Uh, icing. Or an icing call on NIU. Wow, that's a really late icing call no there by kidding. the referee. That was way down in the far side corner when he blew that whistle. Yeah, and Gold, look at Goldsmith. He's, he's irate, too. I mean, he should be. That was a really late call there. Yep, 14 seconds to go to be a defensive zone draw to the right of Alex Hare. And it's going to be Joe Boris. Joe Boris needs to win this faceoff against John Lucas. So it's Boris and Leon and Hanson with Hickey and Pickett, the defenseman. Puck is down and a win to Boris. And Boris actually won that faceoff and kicked it back to Alex Hare, who got down and covered up 11 seconds to go third period, tied at three. Then just win the faceoff, can't control the puck, kill the time, Send get it the down. point. Absolutely. Boris and Lucas again. Win to Boris. Hansen going to go over and get it. Hansen's going to take it and flip it up as it's held in there by McInnes and not anymore as Boris takes it. And that is the end of period number three. So we go to overtime. Both teams are going to get a point. And we played 60 minutes. Nothing decided here. But just my initial reaction here, the first 60 minutes, that's NIU hockey. Oh, yeah. They, they made Missouri State play their, their their style of hockey. There was no really high, high flying, big goal scoring offense from Missouri State. But again, 3-3, you get the point, you go into overtime looking to get that second one here on a Friday night. Absolutely. So we're in overtime, both teams uh, over there and, and talking to their coaches. What's Coach Ronaldo saying to his guys here, Marcus? He's probably saying, let's just get pucks in that. You guys have been playing Husky hockey, continue that play, and good things are gonna happen. So we're going to have five minutes. Marcus, would you take a minute and explain to everybody now what happens in overtime? Yeah, overtime, five-minute overtime. You have four skaters aside, so there's a lot more ice to work with. Uh, D have the forwards, forwards have the Ds, and that just means, in layman's terms, man-on-man -man coverage. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, man-on-man -man coverage is what you've got here. More ice, yeah. which you would, you would expect probably favors Missouri State. Probably. Um, but that, that advantage may be... May, may be negated by the fact that they are so, they've, they've got to be white. Oh. I mean, they had to get up early, uh, an eight-hour bus ride. Um, they get here, and, and, and now not only is it you have 60 minutes, but now you could potentially have, you know, you're going to potentially play 65. Yep. Um, you know, and, and, and your shifts are going to be shorter, so those main guys are going to be out there more. Um, so this will be interesting to see, but I would think that the four-on-four -four situation would probably benefit Missouri State more than NIU. So it's Rosinski, yeah. Hansen, Hickey, and Pickett out there for NIU. For Missouri State, it's Jack Ryan who has the puck. Ryan, for the face-off circle, a shot goes wide. I believe Pickett may have gotten a piece of that. Also out there for, with Jack Ryan. It's 27 buck height. Number eight, Aldag. And number 16 over there, John Lucas. And here comes Missouri State. Three on Jack two. Ryan. A three on two. Ryan to Aldag. Aldag from the shot. A sh a slot, a shot, gets to Hare, but Hare blocks it down with the pads and covers it up, 4.33 to go in the overtime period. Tied at three. And with four skaters aside, you can't have a full line out there, so it'll be interesting to see how Coach Ronaldo, what forward combinations he puts out there. Absolutely. So, you know, it, Marcus, you obviously have to keep due to two defensemen out there. Yep. And then it'll be interesting to see what the forward pairings are. As a face-off win by the Huskies, McSweeney tries to flip it up. He does to center ice, where it's going to be taken by Jacob Guthrie of Missouri State. Guthrie back, and he's going to give it now to Otten. Adam Otten with it. Tried to fire it in, but couldn't as McSweeney and Remley got in his way. McSweeney and Otten battle over there. Now here's Blake Ryan. Interesting thing here that Missouri State has broken up the Ryan brothers for the overtime. Yep. And here's Otten in front. A little block, uh, excuse me, a pad save by Hare. And now... Down deep, Alex Hare out of his net, and he's going to fire it around to the far side. But it's going to be held in there by Guthrie back to Blake Ryan, and it's taken away by Nick Remley. Remley can't clear it all the way down, and it's taken back in by Guthrie. Guthrie in, fires a backhanded shot, goes around the net, and all the way out to center ice. 3.40 to go in the overtime. March gets it to Otten, and Otten on a good stick by Billy Lyon, can't corral it, and goes to center ice where they battle for it. Here's Aldag, line again, fires it back down. 
Kirk's he going to go out just fresh off the bench and pick it up. Here's Boris now. Boris going to be paired with Leon. With Hickey and Pickett, the defenseman. Pick it off the boards to Leon. Leon turns it over there, unfortunately, to Barrett. Barrett with it. With some speed into the Husky zone. Barrett a shot. And the first save by Hare. And it's tried to throw toward the front of the net. And nobody home. Here's Nick Leon to Joe Boris. They've got a two-on-one. Oh, but a good job getting back by Draper. And Boris's pass back to Leon never hits him. And Leon tries to get out to pick it at the point, but it's taken away by Barrett. Now here come the Ice Bears. Under three minutes to go. 2.48. And an offside called against Missouri State. They had two guys going down. How do you get an offside call there? That's, that's way too close to call. Again, hockey is the fastest sport on the earth. And for these refs, you just got to make that split decision call. I thought they were on sides right there. Yeah, it looked like it was to me. But we'll take it as it's a neutral zone draw. It's going to be Lucas and Rosinski. Rosinski with Hansen, McSweeney in line, the defenseman. Win to Rosinski, but he loses it there. But it, now it's off of McSweeney's stick, and Rosinski was trying to get it to Hanson. Hanson was down all alone. Oh, man, if only he could have gotten that. A good block there by McSweeney down is that to break up that centering pass. Here's uh, number 27, Buckheit. Shot goes over the net. And McSweeney gets it off the boards and out to center ice. Kicked back down in. And McSweeney holds. McSweeney cross pass to Hanson. Hanson can't get it. 2.15 to go. Ryan McSweeney with it. McSweeney, boy, he has played a good game tonight. Here's Jack Ryan. In all alone, he's got line between him. Ryan, a shot and a save by Hare. Hare couldn't locate it. Hare thought it went through. And a good job by McSweeney to clear that out. Thrown to the front of the net. Ryan can't corral it as Rosinski gets it. Aldag tried to get it, but line dives for it and dives back. And it's McSweeney with it. McSweeney on the breakout pass. Going to try for Rosinski. He's got it. Rosinski at center ice now as it was turned away by Barch. Justin Rosinski. Boy, some nice stick handling here. Oh, and he just missed. Greenberg. Rosinski follows his pass, now turns around, sends it to the neutral ice. 1.35 to go in the overtime. Pick it, the right point off the boards, just fires it down deep into the Ice Bears zone. Over there is Otten with Remley. Remley leaves it. Here's Hickey at the left point. Hickey tries to redirect. Oh, and it just went wide from Greenberg. Hickey shot that, and Greenberg tried to redirect. But it did not get into the net, just went wide. Here come the Ice Bears, it's Blake Ryan. Now back to Aldag, up to Barch. Here's Otten. Otten to Blake Ryan, one minute in the overtime remaining. In front, and it goes wide. And now this is Greenberg. Greenberg over to Remley. Remley in, Mar Nick Remley with a wrister, and it's kicked wide by Davis. 45 seconds to go in the overtime. Here comes number four, Guthrie. Guthrie with it. Goes wide, now behind the net. Going to thought about the wraparound, but he loses it there to Billy Line. It's a two-on-one the other way up there. Hurry, here's Line on the left. Leon in front. Line to Leon on his pass. Just misses him. Just let him too much. As we approach 20 seconds to go, Leon with it. To McSweeney at the left point. McSweeney shot, never gets through. Here's Boris picks it up at the circle. 15 seconds Got to McSweeney. McSweeney now lines it up. In front. Oh, Leon was there. And here's Boris. Boris winds up a slap shot. Kicked wide by Davis. Five seconds to go in the overtime. And you can hear the fans chanting. And we've played 65 minutes. Nothing is decided here. And we are going to go to a shootout here in Geneva, Illinois at Fox Valley. Woo. I tell you what. This is one of the most entertaining hockey games yeah. I have seen in a while. And give credit to NIU, man. They have they've really played MSU well, and they have made them play Husky hockey. That's right. So we'll go to a shootout, and it'll be interesting to see if you're uh, if you're Coach Ronaldo, who are you putting out? Well, I think you got to use Bach because he's got or Bach uh, Hanson because he's got the high hand. Greeny's your leading scorer. Maybe you give Leon a chance because of his hands. And the way he uh, stick handles the puck. Yeah, you'd have to believe that Greenberg might is in consideration. Yep. I'm going to say Greenberg, Hanson, and uh, Leon. Greenberg, Hanson, and Leon is your guess. My guess. Well, I will be shocked if Greenberg's not out there. I'm sorry, if Hanson's not out there. And I think I'll be shocked if Greenberg's not out there. The other guy could be Line, Maybe could be Boris. Leon, could be Boris. 
Absolutely could be any of those guys. But, you know, the other person that we've got to talk about in this, of course, is um, Alex Hare. Yeah. Alex Hare and Justin Davis on the other end for the Ice Bears. But, uh, you know, th this is this is exciting. Both teams get the points. Yes, now we're do. just going to decide who gets the other one. Yeah. Shooting first is going to be Jack Barrett for Missouri State. Alex Hare in net. Jack Barrett comes in. Barrett is a is a, from Oakville, Missouri, a senior. He's got six goals and eight assists. From Oakville, Missouri, the senior. Puck is on the Cyclones logo at center ice. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, Jack Barrett against Alex Hare. Hare, the sophomore from Cary, Illinois. And, you know, we, we haven't talked much about him, but Hare's played a heck of a game in yep. that, as has Justin Davis. We don't want to neglect the Missouri State uh, goaltender either. And like we said, they flip a coin, so we see Davis tonight, and we see their other goalie. Lombardo. Lombardo tomorrow. Tomorrow, who's equally as good. So Jack Barrett will shoot first for NIU, for NIU, for Missouri State. Let's see if I can find if they have shootout goals on their stats. Barrett is going to start things. I believe it's just power play and... No, he does not have a shootout goal. Here is Barrett on the Cyclones logo across the Coke logo. Here he comes in. And a save by Alex Hare. Turns over and does a little somersault. He went hard into the post. So Barrett misses his first. And big Mike Hansen off the Husky bench. Hansen, the junior from St. Charles. He's got it lined up at center ice. Got one of the best slap shots in the league. Hansen with a shootout goal already. It was against SIUE. Mike Hansen in. Crosses the Chelios logo. Shot saved by Davis. Davis dances a little bit at the end of that. Not showing him up, just shaking things out. Got to believe the nerves are running high yep. for them as well. Off the bench, Jack Ryan. You knew you were going to see one, the Ryan brothers, one of them anyway. Jack Ryan comes in tonight, 16 goals. I'm sorry, 29 goals, 16 assists. Already has one goal tonight. Jack Ryan, if you can believe this, eight shootout goals. Oh, wow. Here you go. Ryan against Hare. Ryan goes wide around the Coke logo, in. Stick handles a little bit, shot wide of Hare's net. And for the Huskies, it's going to be Justin Rosinski. Rosinski has the ability to stick handle. We've seen that. Rosinski has not scored this season. Well, he got his first point on an assist yep. to Bach earlier. Here he comes. Rosinski in his first action, last year's leading scorer, shot just kicked wide. It got through the five hole of Davis, but Davis got enough of a piece of it to kick it wide. And here we go. Draper. It's going to be Draper, Andy Draper on the year. Two shootout goals. Here he comes. Picks up the puck on the Cyclones logo. Comes right over the Coke logo into the slot. Shot saved by Alex Hare. And it's Joe Boris with the opportunity to win the game for the Huskies. He won it against SIUE. Can he do it again? Boris on the year. I know he has that one shootout goal. He has, that's his only shootout goal. Here he comes. Wide of the Chelios logo. In, stick handles. Gets in deep. Shot on oh, a save by Davis. So three shooters for each side. Nothing decided. Get top. comfortable, fans. We could be here for a while. Top of the fourth. Top of the <laughs> top of the fourth, and it is going to be number 28. That is Derek Barch. Barch on the year. No shootout goals. He has nine goals on this on the year. A senior from Belleville, Illinois. Waiting for the official to tell him to that it's okay to get the puck. Derek Barch gets the okay. Comes in, pick up, picks up the puck. Builds up some speed, comes straight in in the slot. Shot save with a stick by Alex Hare. Try going five hole, Hare was up to the task. And here's Mark Green. Greenberg. Again, the Huskies shoot last, so any goal now by the Huskies can win the game as long as Hare continues to stonewall the Ice Bears. Greenberg in. We are in a shootout tied at three. Bottom of the fourth, nobody has scored yet. Here's Greenberg. Picks up the puck, builds up some speed, 
into the slot. Shot S saved by Davis. Thought it went in there. I for thought a it did too. I lost sight of the puck. And now out of the bench for Missouri State, number four, Jacob Guthrie. No shootout goals a on the year. Defenseman. A defenseman, Guthrie. He's a senior from St. Peter's, Missouri. Four goals, ten assists. I would guess we're going to see Bach next for the yep. Huskies. Maybe Leon. Yep. Bach or Leon is my guess. Yep. So, Guthrie. Jacob Guthrie, the defenseman. Again, no shoot, shootout goals yet. Here at the top of the fifth. Guthrie comes wide. In on Hare. Hare pokes it away. Hare's up to the task, and here's Nick Leon. Well, welcome to the Huskies, <laughs> Nick. Let's come on here and win the game. And listen to the crowd. They're yeah. ready, man. Great crowd here at Fox Valley, and nobody's left. Lots of fans on their feet. And here's Nick Leon. Leon, formerly of RMU Gold. Little, little fake and gets oh. wide. Davis, boy, Davis came out and played that perfectly. Leon faked the shot, tried to hold on and get him to go down. He was going to try to elevate it and couldn't. Next shooter for Missouri State as we start, I believe, the top of the sixth, Marcus? Yes, sir. Is number 12, Kirksey. and this is Mark Kirksey with one shootout goal on the year. Kirksey in. Wide kick saved by Alex Hare. Oh, my goodness. And Rob, big Rob Bach. Big Rob Bach. Bach on the year with no shootout goals. Bach comes in. He is a junior. He's got, uh, let's see, eight goals. Bach with a puck. Comes into the slot. Holds up there. Shot wide of Davis. And we go to the seventh. Holy Woo. cow. It's number 11, and this is Adam Otten. Otten with eight goals on the year and no shootout goals. Otten is a freshman from Cottleville, Missouri, 6'2", 180. Big spot here for the freshman. Picks it up, does Otten. On to the Coca-Cola logo. Shot, save into the glove by Alex Hare. My goodness. Flashing the leather. I tell you what, you want to watch goalies play well? Look at Davis oh, yeah. and Hare in this shootout. Bottom okay. of the seventh, and Pickett. it is now Brian Pickett. Let's go, Grandpa. Pickett in. Pickett, this, a grad student from Crystal Lake. Six goals on the year. Comes in, builds up some speed, holds their wrister. Shot! Saved by Davis. And we go to the eighth. And this is going to be number three, Carson McInnes. Five goals on the year. Junior from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. They know their hockey up there. No shootout goals. My goodness, which goalie's going to blink first? As we are in the eighth. Woo. If you can believe it, the eighth. Here's McInnes in. A wrister scores. Carson McInnes scores the goal, and Missouri State takes the lead. And now it's Troy Hickey for the Huskies. He has to score, or Missouri State gets the win tonight. Hickey goes back, taps Alex Harris up to say, I got gotcha. you. Troy Hickey on the year, no shootout goals, picks it up. On the Chelios logo, Hickey in. Dipsy Doo shot and a save by Davis. And Missouri State gets the win as they come off the bench and get the win. They surround. Their goaltender, Justin Davis, and why not, stops eight shots in the shootout. And you know what? Alex Hare is upset with himself, but give him some credit. He stopped sh seven yeah. of eight shots in that shootout. My goodness, eight shots in the shootout, and Missouri State and NIU, and they're shaking hands, and you can tell there's a lot of respect between these yeah. two teams as the Huskies fall in a shootout four to three tonight, but what a game. Oh. And what a shootout! Eight shots, eight innings, if you will, on the yeah. shootout. And one of the be one of their better 60-minute games that the Huskies have had all no year long. No question. And you can't be mad at yourselves. You get the you get one point, and you have the opportunity tomorrow to come back, get a victory, and take three out of four from the number six-ranked team that is right in front of you in the in the standings. Yeah, no kidding. I I I, I got to tell you, this was a tremendous game tonight. Um, the Huskies played well. And uh, I am excited. They're Davis and Hare talking at the end, and you can tell the two of them saying, if you ever faced eight shots <laughs> shootout. Um, 
So great job by them, great job by the Huskies, and, and give the Ice Bears credit. Um, they won the game playing NIU style, so you have to give them credit. So Marcus, uh, now the Huskies' challenge is going to be to avoid the letdown yeah. tomorrow. Saturdays have not been kind to NIU this year. Uh, all but one of their losses is on a Saturday game. Yeah. So do you have any suggestions, anything that they can do to avoid that? What What is NIU going to have to do to avoid that letdown? They're just going to have to continue to, to play Huskies hockey. They played a good 65 minutes plus the shootout tonight. And eventually getting those pucks in that, they're going to go in uh, on Lombardo, who gets the start tomorrow, who, again, has a less than three goals against average. So continue to... Uh, Continue to get shots and at deflections, and you're going to be golden. All right, fans, I, I would agree with that. And, and, you know, hopefully losing a close game like this will will make the Huskies say, you know what, we can play with this team, and they'll come out with a little more fire. they got nothing to be ashamed of. No, definitely you, not. Missouri State's a great team. The Huskies are a great team. Somebody's got to lose the game. And, boy, you went about as far as you could without deciding somebody who's mm -hmm. going to lose. And, you know, give Carson McInnes credit. He beat Hare. But here, stopped all seven shots prior to that and give Justin Davis some credit. Yeah. We good with our three stars? I'm all right, good. and now it's time for the three stars of the game brought to you by Chelios' Pub and Grill, located inside the Fox Valley Ice Arena, home of the NIU Huskies. NIU students, show your student ID at Chelios' for specials and discounts and bring in your NIU hockey game ticket for 10% off your order at Chelios' Pub and Grill, the place where true sports fans meet. We're going to give the number three star to Carson McInnes. You know, it's we should give out ten stars for the yeah. game tonight for both teams. Just guys playing all over the, the – just playing like crazy. You know, we're not going to give either the Ryan brothers a star. We're not Hansen. giving Mike Hansen a star. But you got to – the guy who wins, get, gets yeah. the game winner, you got to give yeah. him a star. And it says something about the game that he gets the number three star. I, I so number three star agree. is uh, Carson McInnes, the junior from Calgary for Missouri State. And that's the game winner on the shootout. Our second star, we're going to give it to the Husky defenseman. And, uh, you know, guys, McSweeney, uh, uh, Hickey, Pickett, um, Billy Line, Frodima, Jacobson. But specifically, I'm thinking of the four, McSweeney, Pickett, uh, Line, and Hickey. Those four, they were on the ice, I would guess, out of the 60 minutes. I would guess 35 to 40 yeah. minutes of it. I definitely and, think so. And they were still playing really well at the end of that game. So we have to give them credit, Husky defensemen. And then our number one star, we're going to give it to Alex Hare and Justin Davis. Yeah. We're going to give them the share. Uh, you know, when, when you have two goalies, each face eight shots. Uh, so they they're face 16 shots, and the two of them stop 15 of them yeah. in, in a shootout. And, and each of them at separate times made incredibly difficult and athletic saves tonight to keep their, their teams where they were. Both teams had good offensive chances. We talked about it during the broadcast. It went back and forth yeah. a lot, and you really felt like it was the play of the two goaltenders that kept them in the game tonight. Yeah, it, it really was. Each team were getting deflections on net. Each team were getting bunch, uh, dozens of shots on net, and both goaltenders were up to the task. That, and you can see why they played so well. You go all the way to a shootout. Absolutely. Well, Marcus, I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. It's it is. It's going to be a good one. Go it is. I got, a, I got a sense that uh, guys on both of those teams are going to get good rest tonight. Oh, yes. They are <laughs> going to be tired. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for our game coverage here from the Fox Valley Ice Arena. This is Scott Swartz and Marcus Grosnick repeating our final score. The Ice Bears of Missouri State defeat the Huskies of NIU 4-3 in a shootout. Carson McInnes notches the game winner. In the eighth inning of the shootout. So until tomorrow, 1 o'clock will be the puck drop. We'll be on the air at 12.50 for game two of the Huskies and the Ice Bears. He's Marcus Grosnick. I'm Scott Swartz. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll see you tomorrow from the Fox Valley Ice Arena. So long, everybody.